Netflix, where your fearless co-hosts Isaac and Larry force each other to watch the worst pieces of shit on Netflix. We will go over every bad edit, all the broken dialogue, all the wooden acting, and laugh along the way, because this is the Bowels of Netflix! Welcome to the Bowels of Netflix. I'm Isaac, and with me, as always, is my fearless co-host, Larry. How are you doing this week, Larry? Well, uh, to start, um, my asshole is killing me. I Sitting down hurts. Standing up hurts. I've crapped out things I haven't even eaten yet. Uh, about 25 minutes ago, I turned to my porch. I was sitting on the couch. I turned to the porch to see that there was a little boy climbing up a pole on the side of my porch. Oh he my. then proceeded to fall into the grass, and I saw his mother come up and start shouting into the window, pointing her finger at me as if I had done something wrong, even though I had noticed the boy about a, a quarter of a second before he fell. So at any point, I imagine that the police are going to knock on the door, or she's going to come here with a shotgun or a rolling pin or something and kick my ass. Um, I, the, the literal last text I got about two minutes before we started recording recording uh was that my girlfriend saying the government tell is telling me i have no credit score and uh i fucking watched twilight so honestly i'm about as bad <laughs> as it could get it's been a rough so, fucking day basically you're jamie lannister with hemorrhoids you've tried to kill a small child and you're bleeding i didn't out do the ass. anything to a small child a small child tried to kill himself using my porch well you shouldn't have had your and porch somehow there. i'm at fault yeah yeah, come on, Larry. You should take better care of your porch and your butthole. Oh, I, listen, that has been an ongoing battle for a long so, time. So wait, who has no credit score? You or your girlfriend? <laughs> My girlfriend. Just, oh. She just texted me. She was like, yeah, so apparently the government says I have no credit score. And I'm like, shut up, dear. They... I'm re- trying to record a podcast with a man that I hate. <laughs> Do, do they think she's dead? I heard that's a big thing. Like, if the government thinks you're dead accidentally because of clerical error, like, your life is just fucked. I mean, I don't know. I really, I truly don't know. I guess I'm going to find out. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, I'll stay tuned. <laughs> Literally 20 seconds before I clicked accept on your call, I get a text that says the government says I have no credit score. Did you send I back said, a dick pic like a gentleman? I said I'm about to record. And I'll talk to you about it after. So, you know. <laughs> Oh, man. It's great. So, good God, you've had a day. It's not been a great day. And I did finish my Twilight review today, so I've, I'm about half a Twilight deep, and I'm shocked that I'm not a case of beer deep into it, because <laughs> I don't know how anyone could like this pile of shit movie. Franchise, <sighs> movement, genre. Movement. Holy I, shit, cult. Isaac. Cult. Holy shit. Well, we are the Bows of Netflix. We're two friends who hate each other dearly. Every oh. one of us. Oh, my, yes. Oh, the I hatred hate is this man. I hate this man. <laughs> Do you take this man to be your lawfully hated man? <laughs> yeah, I think I took that battle a long time ago. <laughs> uh, every week, one of us makes the other one watch the worst movie we can dig up on that fucking website, Netflix. And then they we have to dig it up this time. Fucking literally. <laughs> but I don't know if Bowles has ruined... I mean, I know it has. Well, Bowles is doubly ruining me today. But I don't know if Bowles has ruined my Netflix because the fucking shit I get recommended is horrible. They oh, could yeah. not wait to... Just pump my pussy full of Twilight. Why am I like this? <laughs> I Every time I turn on Netflix, it is just Twilight behind no, every door, so every curtain, the, under the, the couch, everywhere you look, it's Twilight. The producers, the producer team behind making the Twilight movies was like, all right, <laughs> you know who we need? Teen girls. And we're going to pump their pussies so full of Twilight until their money just falls out of them and we can reg- scoop it up and run to the cayman islands i regret many of the things i say almost immediately after i say sometimes while i'm saying them it's <laughs> it's really a crime i i, I deserve to be in probably but we are the bowels of netflix you can find us on facebook find us on twitter send us an email bowels of netflix at gmail.com and little tickler teaser for the end of the show we actually got an email we did from our biggest fan yeah Mr. Michael. So we're going to be reading that at the end of the show. I'm yeah, very excited. Lovely. I know. I feel like a human. Damn. I feel like a human. <laughs> <laughs> da, oh, da, na, na, na. Bang, bang. That's the two gunshots we're going to take each other out with. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. It just I assume it's some kind of duel. And it'll be, you know, take 10 paces, turn and fire. But we'll both turn at one and just fire. No, I feel like we should French kiss while each of us has a barrel of a gun, like sliding in the side of the other's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> uh i just watched battlestar galactica and i'm pretty sure somebody in that show tried that and it doesn't work damn it All right, and by well. pretty sure i mean somebody in that show tries that and it doesn't work 
We'll research it. <laughs> All right. So, Larry, what are you? What did you watch this week? Oh, uh, my hopes and dreams slip away from me. <laughs> uh, any any semblance of joy just slip through my fingers? No, I watched uh, Twilight uh, Breaking Dawn Part Two. So you watched the very end of the series because I'm I an asshole. sure did. Well, I mean that's a <laughs> known fact, and yeah, I sure did. Oh, and boy. boy howdy, is it terrible? <laughs> You know, the first time I watched it, I thought, okay, this is bad, but, like, I think it's just because I don't know what the fuck is going on, and they don't explain it very well. Because they did the fucking, uh, they did the Harry Potter thing where it's like, we didn't get enough money out of this fucking franchise. We're not, we're only billionaires. We haven't quite reached trillionaires yet. I know it's not <laughs> that high. Just get over it. Uh, so, like... Let's fucking break it into two because we know people can't wait to see the thrilling conclusion of what I think that happens at the end of the first one. I, I have a theory we might get into later. Because um, I don't know. I, I didn't go back and uh, read or watch anything about these. I, I kind of think, I, as I was watching this, I kind of had vague memories. I think I did see the first one at some point. But, like, it was long enough ago now that I don't fucking remember any. I kind of, like, I was thinking, I, I made, I wrote down some crack about them never being in school. And then, like, I had a vision in my brain of, like, wait a minute. Isn't there a scene in the first one where, like, fucking big-ass Robert Pattinson is sitting at a desk that's too small for him? And yeah, I kind of sure. think. Because I've seen he, the first one, and there there's plenty of school stuff. I think I did see the first one at some, but I, not enough to remember. I, fucking Edward's a vampire and Bella's not. Or so I thought. Was we'll find out that may not be true. Um, but yeah, so fucking I came into the ass end, the literal last bit of this movie. And like I had said, I had seen the ending scene before um, and knew what to expect even before my first watch of this movie. But anyway, I got off track. So the first time I watched this, I thought, okay, I, this is just bad. But like, I guess I just don't know what's going on. So like, whatever, you know, it just is what it is. And we'll fucking find out later and complain about it then. When I watched it the second time, I uh, I realized that, no, it's just a terrible movie. And you don't even need to know anything to know that it's a terrible movie. It, uh, it fucking proudly stands on its own as being a piece of shit. And uh, I truly hate it. I truly hate it. I didn't hate it the first time. I truly hate it now. I'm glad. I'm glad we've we've blossomed your experience, Isaac. I'm very upset. I can tell. You're I was not as upset. After... Out of your eyes. No, that's poop. After the first <laughs> watch, I was like, "It's a, you know, it's bad, but whatever. I'll just get through it, and then fucking I'll have to watch more later." No, it's bad, and I'm mad. It's bad, and I'm mad. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Ah, Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2. I don't think I've actually said the full name because how can you? How can you? Without being upset. The Rotten Tomatoes incorrectly has the audience score at 70%. Wrong. Ow. Wrong. Stupid. Wrong. Idiot. Idiots. Wrong. The tomato meters at 49%. Too high. Jesus. That and is that's still, too high. That's still quite, that is very much a failing grade, but that's still too high. That's still With, half in, of in the a critics. Word. Like in a that. world where we dabble in the worst, that is too high. Um, yeah, I mean, it's bad. It's, I, I, boy. Oh, Christ. The IMDb uh, is, oh, no, that's, why am I on the trivia? The IMDb is 5.5, middle of the road. Again, that's kind of what I expect. Um, IMDb is almost never lower than a four or higher than a six. I've gotten really any, excited any when movies. it is. When it is, I'm very. That's yeah. usually a I think sign Leo that it's going to be something special. Leo the Lion was like special. 1.9. <laughs> Leo the Lion. I, it's not on Netflix anymore. I don't think. But God Almighty, I that is a Oof. I, that. If there's very few things from this show that I would encourage people to watch, like obviously the one. There's a couple that I liked uh, overall, but, but Leo the Lion's a beautiful train wreck. Leo the Lion is something I feel like if you're a fan of this show, like. That is what I would tell you to get in the idea of just what the fuck we're about. Like, watch that, because that is yep. that is a confusing, terrifying train wreck of a movie. Amen. Um, but yeah, so fucking Breaking Dawn Part 2, last of the Twilight series. I think there's five um, movies. I think there's four books and five movies. Yep. 2012, it seems like it was not that long ago, but I guess the time and actually marches on slowly closer to death. Yeah, that was a decade ago, Larry. It's about uh, a decade ago. The budget of this movie was one hundred thirty-six point two million. Um, <sighs> it's pretty heavy CGI, but I think it, it's not as much as I expected. I mean, there's a lot, but you know, it, 
there's only two billion people on the planet who are currently starving. Mm. Well, the box office was 829.7 million, so Ah. enormous success to the shock of no one. Um, You can feed everyone with that money. Oh, God. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh, So I don't have a lot to say about the filmmakers themselves because I just fucking don't care. But I do want to, we're going to talk occasionally about the authoress of these books, Stephanie Meyer. Mm. I have a couple of things to say about her, but I think there's something that is very important to note right at the top, because it's, and I want to thank uh, my dear friend Sarah, uh, basically family at this point, for bringing this up to me in the first place, because I never would have known about this. A couple of months ago, we were talking about Twilight. (laughs) I should have saw that coming. And uh, now, of course, I've watched it. And uh, Stephanie Meyer, uh, Mormon, very Mormon. Yes. Very, Very interesting. Did not know that at the time. Uh, I mean, I knew it. I knew it when we started to watch the movie. I, I knew that, but yeah. And a- apparently, a huge theme of the entire series is don't lose your virginity before you get married. Yes, that it comes up a lot. Um, and we're gonna see the one plot string in particular. Anyone who's a fan of Twilight, by the way, who's listening, because I mean, I-, I have friends who know these movies are terrible. But they nostalgically love them because they watched them when they were 12. And what's what Twilight is aimed at is 12-year-old girls. So, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's any ifs, ands, or buts about it. That was the target market for these films. Um, so, like, even though I have friends who just said, like, outright, like, yeah, I mean, they're terrible. But also, I've watched all of them the last weekend at once. And so, I get that there's, there's like, nostalgia for it. But, yeah, um... We're going to talk a little more about Stephanie Myers as we go through, but yeah, very Mormon. And I, I, I do want to bring up my my personal feelings on premarital sex, okay? Because I'm a terrible person, okay? But Larry, would you say that marrying someone is more of a commitment than buying a car? Yes. You test ride a car before you buy it, don't you? That is. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Isaac. Yes. And, like, joking aside, yes, you should, you know, make sure there's some kind of intimacy compatibility before you commit to a lifetime with a person. Uh, let, let me stop you from ruining our career. <laughs> Inadvertently. Because I, I I agree, in a way. Uh, I think if that's something you want to do, if you want to refrain from sex before marriage, sure. That's fine. I think it's wrong to tell people you go to hell. If you have sex okay. right, that's my stance. If that's you, a very good point. Because look, I don't drink. I don't. I never had a drop of alcohol in my life. I get a lot of people who think I'm fucking weird. I get a lot of bartenders look at me like I've sprouted horns. Okay, it's not quite the same thing, but it's it's on the same sort of. It's refraining from something that you know, in a way, is harmless to drink socially at a bar. In a way, I, there's. A, we're not gonna go into that oh, yeah. whole. But um. It's the and same. I would like sex too. Sex, sex can be horribly misused and abused, and right. uh, you know, you just um, fuck up and create just, a life, and then just ruin that life's life forever. Yeah, or just emotionally hurt people, damage yourself, get STDs. Right. Like same with same with alcohol and drugs. Like you can use it casually and have a lot of fun, and it be a you know a useful part of your life. Right. Or you could, you know, go down a bad road, or you could choose to abstain. And like, if you if you really want to wait till marriage, mm-hmm. that's fine. I don't as know. long as it's a choice you've made, then that is totally. If you're cool with it, then I'm cool with it. You know what? If that's what you want to do, sure. Yeah. I think you're missing out, but people say that about drinking too. Same thing. I can't really speak on it because I've got a sort of a similar. Just it's an indulgence, really, when you're just dating or just you know. In Ultimately, a most important thing is to be honest, forthright, and yes. with with your partner. That's just good relationship advice relationship. about everything. Yeah. But yeah, I, so so if you want to, you know, if you don't want to have premarital sex, go, whatever, do you do you or do you? You could do the more the Mormon thing or soaking it, where you just you put the wiener in the vagina and then you don't move. No, that's fucking weird. Don't do that. Okay, come soak on, let's it, just soak it. All right, look, I'm gonna, I have to be somewhat horrible. Don't fucking Larry. soak. It. Come on, Larry, <laughs> would, would you let me soak it in your butthole? I, I don't want anything near my butthole right now. <laughs> Well, not okay. even as a joke. After, I didn't want to think after about. After you've healed, after the wounds have been cauterized by a medical. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I just I, if don't fucking tell kids that they're gonna go to hell if you fucking get a. Don't tell anyone anything. they're going to hell for anything. Yeah, fuck, dude, fuck you, fuck, I hate religion. Fuck hell. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> I think this is going great. <laughs> but yeah, so well, I'm sure we're gonna talk about her a bit for um, the one storyline that I'm sure the people who know me and 
know the things that I love and hate and know the, the content of this book and movie, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm fucking talking about and I'm going to bring up and that people who are real fans of this are going to be very upset. So we're going to lose some listeners, Isaac, so there's that. I'm, oh, Anybody I'm so who's intrigued. a fan of this show and Twilight and does not want one of them slandered, you're in for a bad time. Because, boy, do I have a lot to say about fucking children. But anyway, um, so yeah, I, I think we got all the basics out. It made a lot of money and, you know. Okay, yeah, like I said, uh, no shock to anybody. We're going to be reviewing more in this series. And I do, this is not even a formally insisting. I demand that if we review these movies, you must use, you must call them Bella, Edward, and Jacob. We have to keep consistency <sighs> with the main three casts, okay? Because there are... I am not kidding. I think this movie has 27 or 28 named characters. Let's negotiate. How about Fella, Fedward, and Fakeup? No. I, you can shorten them to, like, I think I call Edward Eddie a bunch and Jacob Jake, because, I mean, come on. But, like, don't, you, you cannot be like, oh, here's the main character, brown hair, because fucking, we're gonna, no, if we're gonna both review the same series, okay, we gotta I'll at least keep the main characters consistent, all right? Jacob's Jake the Snake, Edward is... Scissorhands Depp. That's as all right. As long as you don't call them by a tall guy and brown hair, that's the part <laughs> we can't do that if we're doing the same movie. As long as they're identifiable as those fucking three that all bang each other or whatever. I don't know. At some point, I think they all bang each other. We'll see. You know, I'm not going to follow that rule. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it weird if we don't. <laughs> I'm gonna make it. I, I'm gonna correct you every time to the point where we just won't have a show anymore. It's just gonna be me yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> Which that might be a show, so that might be an yeah. threat. But anyway, let's let's not fucking get into this goddamn thing. Okay, so yeah, uh, thanks for making me watch it in fucking reverse. Many kudos to you. Uh, so we open up on some snowy mountains tinged in red because Isaac vampires drink blood. You see, <laughs> get out and of here. Blood is red. Uh, what? So when we get we get a big like opening credit crawl, which is kind of like not a crawl, but like a actually credits like not like a Seinfeld episode over top of the action it's just like mm-hmm. actual credits which I guess is kind of I don't see that in movies very often so it's kind of like oh well, this is different you know, not I kind of like it, it when movies do that yeah especially you know, when yeah. they're good movies well <laughs> this is not that but I was sort of like all right you know I that's something. especially if there's a good opening song over it oh it was terrible yeah well most of the music in this movie is bad uh, cuz it's like, you know, teeny romantic music from the 2010s. But one of my favorite bands does do the song that is basically right in the beginning, so that's great for me. Um apparently Dakota Fanning is in this. Didn't catch it on my first watch, really? I guess, and I have no idea who she was and I forgot to look it up, so I still don't know and fuck it, I don't care. Um this movie also does feature Rami Malek, who would go on to play Freddie Mercury in the Queen movie with the name that I forget. Uh well, the movie about Queen. He, Bohemian Rhapsody. Their oh, most Bohemian, famous that's song. It. That's it. Uh, yeah. No, I, I really, I enjoyed that movie a lot. Um, apparently, it's like uh, now in vogue to not like that movie or like Rami Malek's portrayal of Freddie Mercury, but I thought it was great, But so maybe I'm wrong. That sounds like stupid ultra-leftist nonsense. I, I don't know what they're what charges they're leveling I, against it. I, no, but. I don't. I don't think that it, he's canceled or anything like that. I think it was just people are like saying it was not good. It was just bad acting, and just like they gave him the teeth, and that's all it was. I thought it was fine, but you know, I don't really. I'm not that invested in. It. I'm not that invested in musicians or musician stories. So I just thought it was a good movie, and I like. Uh, so anyway, we get a lot of opening credits with blood and trees and mountains before eventually we zoom in on the action. The action here being our protagonist Bella, who seemingly is a vampire. I thought Bella was a human. Um, it turns she was. It turns out that for the entirety of this movie, Bella is a vampire. Um, so at the end of part one, she gets bit. So you watched a little bit of part one, you told me? Yeah, like 40 minutes. Okay, and she was a human in that? Uh, I, as far as I could tell. Okay, I think, again, I have done no research into anything that came before on purpose, because A, I don't want to watch them, because Isaac's a fucking demon from hell sent to mock me for my sins, and B, because I truly just do not care. Uh, and it kind of doesn't matter, really. It's, it's sort of self-contained in its own puddle of shit. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't really know what the circumstances that led to her becoming a hu- uh, vampire was. I think I have it figured out. 
But, you know, um, we'll we'll talk about that a little later. So Bella seems to be a brand new vampire, I gather. Because she's looking around the room she's in while a song by Passion Pit plays. Passion Pit is one of my f- favorite bands that I very much enjoy. So this makes me very sad that they have a <laughs> fucking goddamn song in this piece of shit picture. But, you know. Hey, I'm it. sure they were able to buy houses because of the licensing deal. Yeah, it's funny because they were. Um, uh, my, I found them through my stepdad, who found them when they were performing in basements for like two hundred people, which is that a show snap. he went to. And now they like sell out Madison Square. It's kind of cool to be with a band that's been like you know started from nothing. Um, so that's kind of neat. But anyway, uh, so I'm bummed that they have a fucking a place in history with this goddamn movie. So we see that Bella gets I zoom in vision on several things around the room because she has a heightened vampire senses. Now in the fucking Twilight mythos. Um, all vampires have red vampire eyes, like blood red. Get it, Isaac? Get it? Because they drink blood. Wait, wait, they drink blood? Vampires drink blood. Get out of here. Yeah, I know. I thought they drink um, milk. So yeah, they all... Uh, uh, much different. <laughs> wait, milk. you don't like milk? Not really. Kind of, we're adults. We're not really supposed to drink milk anymore. Um, Chocolate milk? I mean, it's like... it's Now... Th- thank you. Thank you, doctor. If I am... Just pregnant... fucking four-year-old pushing glasses up. Uh, Chocolate milk. If <laughs> I am... Pr- if I impregnate my wife and stuff my cocoa wife. powder up her asshole okay. and I suckle upon her teat. And how is she? Would it be chocolate milk? No. She's currently filing for divorce papers, obviously. Don't blame her. Don't shock it take I, this long. I'm 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 sure there would be a way to make booby milk chocolate milk. And I just don't like if you like just... injected the powder in the in the right part of the, the milk ducts. <laughs> the milk ducks like and the, then you you massage the boob around to like mix it like you got to give a chocolate milk bottle a shake weren't you briefly considering being a medical doctor did i forget that did i, refer, am I no remembering? that was clearly one of our other friends okay. i no. <laughs> i would get fired on day one for making fun of the boobies or whatever i think i think you ask that question to any medical professional they're going to be institutionalized no there's got to be a way to make booby milk come out as chocolate milk okay I'm yeah sure listeners it right be- in if you know anything about the breast or medical profession or <laughs> hey, I, Larry, I know something about the just, breast. Just want to call Isaac a fucking moron. Those are always welcome. There's got to be a way. All right, I'll move on. Not really. I'm going to still be thinking about it for the next hour and a half. Great. <laughs> There's got to be a way. So yeah, all the vampires in this fucking universe have blood red eyes, and apparently, according to IMDb, I did look at the trivia and stuff, but I could only bear so much of it. Um, apparently in all these films, the fucking blood red contacts hurt like a son of a bitch. Oh. And, um, Bella had to wear them in this movie and was like, also found out they were a son of a bitch. And apparently she had been kind of down on how much they probably didn't hurt before. I can, I'm sure that's, that's interesting. on a DVD extra two editions ago. I don't know. Shit. <laughs> so Bella eventually zooms in on a man standing in the doorway. This man is Edward, which we can tell from the hideously hideous and gaudy ring on her finger is her husband. I hope. Uh, Bella and Edward, um, they're just kind of boring, regular white people of no particular note. Uh, I, I guess they're traditionally attractive. Um, I don't really get anything from them, personally. I know people went crazy over them, and it's just like, yeah, they're attractive, sure. But yeah, I mean, no, I think they're they're both pretty hot. They're nines, at least. Yeah, I, I, that's all I got. I, I a lot more people have a lot more things to say about it, and I don't. I don't know. I'm just middle of the road, so I'm just. Gonna I would leave it dump a load on either of their feet. Of course you would. Yeah. Oh, like a gentleman on the feet. <laughs> right. Yeah. So they kind of touch one another as she is apparently recovering from her vampirism. I think Edward calls her beautiful and comments they're the same temperature now, and they <laughs> can fucking see themselves in the mirror because yeah, yeah that's vampire lore. But how else would they be pretty if they came in the mirror? Um. Bella hugs Edward and immediately squeezes him too tight. Bella is the strongest vampire in this entire movie. Yeah, what? We're going to see as we go on. Um, So Bella definitely was a human before. Uh, With no explanation to me as to why or Mm. how ever Bella is the strongest vampire. And that is a fact. It is a fact. It is not like, it's not fucking his midichlorian levels are off the charts, master. It's not... The chosen one. It's just Edward is like, oh yeah, she's just the fucking strongest and the best, and it's that's, it's just it's proven constant. That's it's so n- stupid. There's no no doubt or no question about it. Now, Isaac, together you and I watched. I had to be coerced and persuaded, and I'm sure watching it with me was terribly annoying. Uh, you enjoyed it. We watched. No, I did. I, I eventually. I mean, it took a while. 
uh, True Blood together. Yes. And uh, the True Blood vampire rules, which are also stupid. I, I, I did enjoy that show. Less stupid. Very stupid show. I, I don't, it's not good, but I did enjoy it immensely. <laughs> it's not good, but I love it. Um, the rules there are, uh, the older vampire is always infinitely stronger than a younger vampire to like, it's not even a question. It's not even close to a question. Yeah. Um, so that's the rules I'm used to because I don't give, I think I, I think I have a rant about this later. I don't give a fuck about vampires. I've always, always hated vampire mythology. Long before Twilight existed. It's just, it just sucks. But we'll get into that more. But yeah, so that I was kind of expecting the rules to be sort of similar. Like, okay, this chick who's been a vampire for what appears to be like two days is kind of what I've gathered from, from context clues. She is the strongest vampire. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Unquestionably. Oh, oh, Isaac, are you tired of hearing how good Bella is? I yes. hope not. I hope not. I'm tired. I hope not, because that Can is I... the whole point of this movie. God damn it. Oh, 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 Isaac. Isaac, I have I have covered three minutes of the movie so far. <laughs> it gets so much worse. So these two have really over-the-top, sappy teen love shit and a bunch of kissing before Bella remembers her daughter. Her daughter's name is Renesme. Renesme. You're going to have to explain that one. Not a funny word I made up. That's just the poor girl's little name. Isaac, I don't know what that means. Her name is Renesme. Uh, I don't I, I, I don't know why. Okay, I my, think I think it must be a portmanteau of something because I think they said at one point I think one of the many many and I do mean many tertiary vampires is named Esme. I think I caught that. Yeah. Not oh, my, you did. You caught that too. My uh, lovely wife informed me that Renesme is a portmanteau of both of their moms, or at least Edward's vampire creator mom. It's it's their names combined. Renesme. It's awful. You know what else combines characters' names together like that? Dragon Ball Z, Gogeta. Fucking <laughs> Dragon Ball Z does the same goddamn thing. Um, yeah, Renesme. <laughs> I'm never gonna not stop saying that because fucking. Are you kidding me? Renesme? That's a good name. I'm willing to bet you shut your fucking mouth. Do you have a name for your penis? No. Don Knotts. Actually, yes. I'm willing okay. to I'm willing to bet there's a <laughs> it, it is Don Knotts. I'm willing to bet there's a handful of little 14-year-old Renesmes running around right now, falling in love with your children. Their parents are at your PTA meetings. They're there! They're everywhere! Guess who's not taking vaccines? <laughs> Isaac, my sole hope for this decade is I get to attend the wedding of a Renesme and a Khaleesi, because frankly, I don't think there's a single thing on planet Earth that would better define this entire generation. Unfortunately, that's very true. Would you suicide bomb the wedding? No, 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 I'm going to fucking... Listen, listen, I'm beyond trying to change how awful the world is. I'm just going to revel in it like a pig and shit. Let's just so would you? I'm, I'm ready to party to the end of the world at this point, man. Would you just poach all the bacon wrapped scallops as soon as the waiters come out? I don't like scallops. Can I just have the you bacon? You fucking monster. Yeah, I know. I don't like anything. I like uh, bacon, if you haven't seen my yeah. fucking Who fat gut. Who doesn't like bacon besides vegans? I know a lot uppity. of people that don't. don't like bacon? Yeah. What? I know. Nonsense. I didn't. I think, fun uh, fact hey. about Larry Beard, which, uh, speaking of stupid names, Larry Beard, hard to get done with than that, but they did it with their resume. Um, I was about to say if there is any people that should be genocided it's people who don't like bacon and then i remember the jews don't eat pork so i'm gonna there you go. nullify that one that's good there you yep. go glad mm -hmm. thank you for even saying it thank you for putting the thought yep. out there i did not fun fact about me i didn't eat bacon to the age of 22 what the yep. what is wrong with my you? my father was an incredibly hedonistic human being he he indulged in every vice he possibly could uh, refused to ever eat bacon, so there's never any in the house. Was he said it was reason? bad for your heart? Well, okay. As he He's did not meth. wrong, but he did meth. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of meth. Yeah. God damn it! Pretty sure meth is worse than bacon. Well, uh, he he died at fifty nine or uh, fifty six or fifty eight. I don't know. He's fucking dead. So clearly something's wrong. God. But yeah, no, I didn't have it till I was an adult, and I was on my own, and I was like, oh, I should try this bacon thing. See what the, all the big hubbub is about it. And it was really good. <sighs> I can't. Anyway. Can't. <laughs> oh, we got a lot of movie to go through, so we're just going way <laughs> off the rails. This is terrible. Um, yeah, I, I, fucking. I by the way, I have typed the word Renesme five times so far, and it is spelled a different way each time because <laughs> it is an impossible name to spell. And I think uh. 
no matter how many times I have fucking written it down here, I don't think it's ever spelled the same way twice. Uh, <clears throat> Bella wants to see her daughter, but Edward says she needs to hunt. So they fast run through the forest while Bella admires the sights of the new vampire sense. Um, and uh, this is just a fact. This is this is not an opinion of Larry Beard. This is a fact of the universe. In no media ever, in any form, has any sort of vampire fast running ever looked anything but completely idiotic. It is an impossible feat to make vampires moving fast look good in anything. It is impossible to that. Stop trying. It never, ever, ever looks anything but utterly ridiculous. It just does what? not translate to screen. Why don't va- vampires fast hump? Isaac, do you think we're not going to get to that? They fast hump? They don't see it, but it is spoken of. What? Really? They fast hump in uh, True Blood a lot, in fact. Really? Oh, man. I yeah, don't you don't know. remember that? You don't, don't remember, remember anything. a humping fact. You, of all people. Yeah, there's I like guess... a scene where fucking two of the vampires are, like, humping around a room really fast, and they would, like, move in and out of position and super fast. You don't remember that? I don't remember that. I don't know. I get. I mean, I get. if, like, it's too fast where I can't, like, appreciate the boobies, then I'm, you know, not really paying attention. Too fast, too furious is how everyone is going to be at you. And me! <laughs> um... So yeah, I like it, to appreciate the movies. It's just it it never looks good. Just stop trying. Just please stop trying. Just make vampires move. Just stop doing stuff about vamp. Well, see, I can't say that because I just watched something with vampires that was absolutely incredible. We'll talk about the end. Um, so uh, Eddie makes Bella close her eyes in the woods until she hears a deer. They kind of sneak up on it and watch it from a rock. Um, suddenly Bella starts going haywire, and we see in the middle distance or whatever a human man is free climbing what appears to be a sheer two hundred degree rock face. And he skins his whittle knee. Um, uh, Bella can smell this blood from however far away. She's a great white shark. Isaac, yes, I do believe someone makes that decision. Um, she powers through the forest and also starts free climbing the rock face, scaling it with her powerful vampire arms and fingers, I guess. Um, then vampires I, are Spider-Man. I positively despise vampires. I know the, it's trendy ever since this series got popular and made... Like, fucking vampire lore, the new hit teen thing. I, I know that's not the first series to do it, but this is the one that really took off. Uh, just for the... Uh, yeah. So, but, like, What We Do in the Shadows is a TV show that I started watching because I told my, one of my best friends, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Heads up, bro. I love you. Uh, I told him I had to do this, and it was terrible. And he said, oh, if you want to see something about vampires, it's great. Watch this show called What We Do in the Shadows. I watched the whole thing in two days. I could not stop watching. It is incredible. I encourage everyone to watch it. Everything <laughs> Matt Berry touches is the greatest thing to ever exist. That man is a fucking... He's the best thing England has ever produced, hands down. God bless him. And that show is amazing, and I encourage you strongly to watch it. Um, But anyway, that aside, vampires are just so fucking lame. They're just... It's so... It's just so lame. I don't have a better word for it, even. It's all, like, it takes all the drama of being a teenager and amplifies it a thousandfold. In every, not, even in the stuff that's not, like, Twilight, sappy teen love story. Like, the stuff for adult, like, uh, Interview with a Vampire. Anything Anne Rand has ever produced. It's just the height Anne of Rice, teen- not Anne Rand. <laughs> oh, shit, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Atlas Shrugged was not vampires. <laughs> Atlas Shrugged because the vampire was biting his neck. Clearly. <laughs> no, you're, thank you, Anne Rice, excuse me. <laughs> um, it's, like, all this, the height, it's teen drama, like, exemplified and pushed even farther. I I just, I've never enjoyed it at all. Like, I, True Blood was hilarious for how ridiculous it was. Uh, and I got into it the way people that get into soap operas and professional wrestling. So I, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I this is just, I don't know. I just hate it. They're just looking at it and fucking seeing vampires just doing vampire stuff. I just run. I think it. something about it being an episodic TV show you're a lot more welcoming of it being trash compared to a movie. I think the threshold of enjoying a movie, it has mm-hmm. to be better than a TV show. You can like a crappy TV show. Right. And yeah, I, True Blood was interesting to me, especially in the first season, because it's like a murder mystery. I True, mean, yeah. it, but it's like... And it was very character-driven, in... too. Yeah, yeah. And just some of those characters are hilarious. Jason is amazing, and yeah. I would watch an entire Jason-based show. I kind of want to start watching that again. I it's don't. been like 10 years. It's, yeah. So much of it's so bad. I never, I never finished it after we stopped. I'll watch watching the first it. season again. I will watch the first season. There was some good stuff in that first season. Anyway, this is going off the rails, and we are so we are not even ten minutes into the movie. Jesus. <laughs> um. So yeah, fucking Bella's climbing up this. She's charging towards the human to ostensibly eat him, 
But Eddie gets to her in time and stops her after she gives a very rough reading of her lines. She's like, oh, I'm so hungry. And she is a wretched actress. Okay, I do, she sucks. I never liked her. Um, she was also in a movie called Snow White and the Huntsman, which um, my grandmother and my sister and I saw in theaters. Like, my grandmother loved watching movies. Like, she would watch anything. That woman watched fucking four seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! with my sister and I, the kids show, when I was, Lord. like, 16. And my sister was, like, I guess she'd have been 9 or 10. And my grandmother got into it. Like, she would watch anything with us. She loved movies. All three of us watched that movie just saying, God, that thing fucking sucked. And it because <laughs> Kirsten Stewart, is is that who it is? I always get their name wrong. Kristen Stewart, yeah. Kristen Stewart. She sucks, all right? She's a she's bad actress. I have but, not heard complimentary stuff of her acting. Robert Pattinson, however, I've heard he's actually become quite a fine actor. Uh, I don't I have really any problem with stuff. his acting in this movie. I don't know. I can't speak for the whole series. He's just, Edward's kind of just bland. I don't know if it's better yeah. in the other movies. Edward just fucking brings nothing to the table in this movie. Jacob sure is Pattinson way more interesting, and he's not interesting. Yeah. I, but I, I think I mean, he, he's I, yeah. improved his chops. Chris okay, Stewart, that, I don't know about that. I've heard multiple people tell me that uh, Pattinson is better now. Um, but I, I really, like, I don't have any complaints to levy at him, except his character is just there. His character, enough. And once like, he yeah, with blew it, a load into Bella, he kind of stopped mattering. <laughs> like, I honestly, like, the baby's way more important. So. With this kind of movie, like, the best you can do is not hating someone's performance. Yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about his. I, I don't think much of Taylor Lautner's performance either, but a- anything's better than yeah, Bella. I, I think he's a bimbo. Yeah, he's, I don't, it wasn't very good. But, like, I don't have any examples off the top of my head where I was like, oh, that line read was terrible. Chris Stewart's lines are real bad. She's real bad. Real bad. So, anyway, yeah. So, she's about to eat this fucking mountain climber. And uh, Eddie's like, wait, no, don't do that. And she's like, oh, you're right. Fuck. And then she jumps off to go hunt the deer. And while she goes back to hunt the deer, a mountain lion is there and jumps at the deer. So, she tackles it out of midair with hilariously bad vampire jump powers and mm. then eats the kitty instead of the deer. And so um, you but, can eat animal blood as a vampire? I yeah, yeah. That I, is I thought Isaac, the whole point. This is one whole, of this is one of only two times in the whole movie that anyone drinks blood. The whole curse of being a vampire because you're you're effectively immortal and have powers, the whole curse is that you have to drink human blood. Well, here's the thing. Um, I'm guessing, I have to assume that at some point in the fucking four books and five movies, that gets addressed, and it wasn't addressed in this one, and I don't give a fuck, and I I don't care. Jesus. Maybe you can tell me one day, or probably more likely I'll be telling you. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Um... So yeah, Edward is, he's positively floored that Bella was able to run away from a human mid-hunt, as even normal vampires have problems with that. Oh boy, we'll get into that later. Um, Bella is the strongest vampire. Bella has been a vampire for maybe 30 minutes. Bella is amazing, and you want to be Bella. Keep that I do want to be Bella. You do. Oh, Isaac. You do one. Mm-hmm. Somehow I she feel my boobies all day. Full of chocolate milk. Somehow she got no blood <laughs> on her dress from fucking violently eating a mountain lion. I, <laughs> search me. That's just good manners. Bella and and Eddie come back. God damn you! Come back to the house in the middle. Of, <laughs> why am I laughing so hard? At what is a terrible joke? It's so bad. But it, you got me. You got under my skin there. <laughs> um, Bella and Edward come back to the house in the middle of the woods and run into our third main character, Jacob the werewolf. Um, so uh, obviously he's Taylor Lautner, a very handsome and attractive man. He's very ripped. Um, he is, I don't, I had the article pulled up about his ethnicity. So th- this this is something I'd read while I was reading about the Mormon thing. I, this also came up. So this wasn't explained in the movie, but I want to talk about it now. I'm sure we're going to talk about it in the rest of the fucking series. You doing these out of order is such a disservice just to the fans, okay? <laughs> like, me I, it, me suffering, yeah, I'm going to suffer regardless, but God damn it, you're just making the poor fans suffer. And that truly is the only joy I get out of this, is that I'm not the <laughs> only one suffering. So I think in, this is, again, not explained, I, I just kind of gathered this, and it may not be 100% accurate, so so grain of salt here. Um, I think all the werewolves are meant to be some Native American tribe, like all from the same one. Okay. So I believe that Jacob's nationality is meant to be Native American in the movie. Uh, I believe Taylor Lautner, the actor, has come out and said he's like 
very distantly. He's like one thirty seconds, you know, something. Oh, okay. One of those facts. He he fucking. If you took a test, he's probably like one sixteenth or less. He's very distant. Right. Um, one because I, I believe people were upset about the fact that it's she's saying because like, I think there was like I think there's some fucking real life tribes that got their uh, culture appropriated for werewolves. I believe. Yeah. I mean, that's a dumb thing to do in the first place. If you're going to do it, hire an actual person from the tribe to play that role. Right. I, you know, or just don't do that. Just don't do that. Yeah, exactly. I don't, know. I don't know. But so I don't know any of the werewolf rules that's not really mentioned. But he, uh, yeah. So anyway, so yeah, it's, um, Jacob greets them and I guess he's like cool with them or whatever. So, OK, I do know that at least at one point, Jacob and Edward were romantic rivals for Bella's affection because she... Indeed. Bella, being the most beautiful and, and pure and amazing human that ever existed, was like the hottest commodity in the supernatural monster fuck market. But <laughs> in this whole movie now, um, Jacob seems like totally fine in just being like her best friend now. Um, and everybody seems pretty cool with that. And he never really shows uh, any interest in like, I want to fuck Bella. Why are you married to this vampire? Uh, which is great because, frankly, I was dreading this courtship and horse shit because that is basically all True Blood is. So glad that's out of the way. But um, there's a reason why. And, you know, to Twilight fans, hold on to your butts now and prepare to start sending me angry letters and horses' heads in the mail. Um, The reason why Jacob is interested in Belle anymore is because Jacob wants to fuck a baby. Excuse me? Jacob wants to fuck Bella's baby. So I Jacob's can... Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Native American. <laughs> Uh, do they do the diddling? I, I don't not answer that question. No, the Catholics. <laughs> the Catholics did the diddling. Okay. Uh, I can hear the entire Twilight fandom rise up and give a collective vampiric shriek as they hear this, but it's just too delicious to poke fun at. Because yikes, Steph Meyer! Yikes, what were you thinking? What so, were you thinking, you awful woman? So he, what he, he were wants, you thinking? I'm clapping back like the kids do. He wants to. He. he does he, okay, does he want to fuck the baby now, or is he just putting time in until the baby's ripe? You got a little Woody Allen, but we'll get to that. So, All right. Bella warns Jacob to stay away as she's deep in bloodlust, I guess, question mark. But mm. um, he says it will be safer for the baby if they test uber strong, beautiful, amazing, and powerful, but also sexy and caring Bella before she, I don't know, eats her own fucking baby or whatever. That seems to be a concern everybody has for a couple minutes, that Bella's going to eat her own fucking baby. So, Bella That's is honestly just... a concern I have about being a potential parent. <laughs> I I'm like sure, Veal. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of parents who looked at their baby and thought, I could eat that. Honestly, I don't, and I don't even think you're wrong. I think that's just a natural human thing. I think everybody a, a baby would be delicious. I don't ever plan on eating a baby. It's the but same I'm thing sure. as like no parent will ever ever admit it, and I don't blame them. That every parent has thought about how easy it would be to dash their fucking baby on the rocks. Like it, everybody oh thinks, yeah. and every, yeah. you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's 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 human. It's the thing we do. No, very I, few people do it, and those people do it are wrong. I had a, a five-minute drive earlier today. Mm -hmm. I thought about swerving into oncoming traffic like six times. Oh, I do think about that all the time. It's horrible. <laughs> I, I shouldn't be alive or allowed to live. Um, Bella is suspicious as to why Jacob gives a shit about her vampire baby, and Eddie and Jacob share a meaningful look. <laughs> Spoiler, it's because old Jakey's going to fuck that baby, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, so anyway, they test Bella, and she mentions that Jacob stinks like a wolf. Hardy har. Uh, he tells them they look great together and takes them to meet the Whittle vampire. So inside are a fuck ton of vampires. This is the Cullen family, of which Edward is a part. Um, there's a lot of fucking Cullens, and I don't give a shit about any of them. And as far as I'm aware, at least in this movie, only two of them matter. Um, so the, the I'm going to say, patriarch of this clan, uh, Daddy Cullen, he's like the leader of the coven, and he's kind of like all the decisions go through him. And then Psychic Cullen who she's this lady vampire and she can see the future. The rest of them do not matter in the slightest, at least in this movie. I, maybe they're important in the other movies. I don't know. In this I movie, they do it. not matter in the slightest. And there is like eight of them. Not, I'm not kidding. There's a fucking lot of them. So I, most of them, I don't even get their names. So I don't know. Uh, I don't also, I don't know if they're all related or if it's just like a vampire thing. Like you're my vampire dad. Cause you drank my blood and sucked my dick. And that's, you know, it's, I don't know why I added that. You make bring out the worst in me. <laughs> that's why I'm here. Oh, and uh, by the way, then they bring out the baby. Um, Isaac, I need you to go to Google image search and look just for twilight CGI baby. Cause it's um. quite possibly the worst thing that's ever been created by CGI. It is uh, folks, you at home, if you've never seen twilight, 
Just go into your fucking favorite search engine, put in the words Twilight CGI Baby, and just have a gander at Google Image Search. So, wait, I'm sorry, you said um, Riley Reed Nudes? No, no, I didn't. No? Oh, that, mm, damn, that's what I Googled. Okay, I Googled the baby. It's, it's, why? What is, what is it? Does it, it is have long stuff. hair later? So there's different versions of this yeah, fucking thing that didn't actually like the make hairless it. One, so the, the one with the, the long one hair I is, saw, yeah, oh, the one with the long God. hair is the most horrifying thing in the world. No, the short hair one still awful, still terrible, yeah, still it, that's still definitely really uncanny un- valley, deeply unsettling, yeah. But the long hair one, who's that girl in the fucking chess show? Oh, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I, uh, uh, Queen's Gambit. I can't remember the yeah, yeah, yeah. name. Uh, but her eyes are really wide apart. Yes. And she's still, she's attractive because she's a human and not a horrifying robot. Mm-hmm. But well, I this think reminds also, me. I, yeah. I think Twilight did make a doll, a real doll. That might be the doll that they were like, we can't use this because God will put us, send us to hell like right now. Seriously. So maybe that's what it is. But just like everything, like even the CGI baby, it's still terrible. It looks like a little man that's in a business suit <laughs> looking up at its weird vampire mother. It's not good. I don't like anything about this child. Got it. it. It's it, the, the one with the long hair is like they're trying to make a baby sexy. They're giving it sexy eyes and like no, 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 no. They wanted. I, I watched a video about this. They wanted to make it so that I, I, I think, I think it's because this comes up in the books. They wanted to make it like very clearly identifiable to Bella. I think. Uh, they failed? Oh, I agree. No, I think even they realized they failed. It, it's fucking hideous. It's but hideous. no, but making a baby look like Bella, because Bella is is fairly attractive. Kristen Stewart's attractive. Sure. An attractive grown woman. Look, I'm, that's what they said. I'm not agreeing. It's I, fucking... So yeah, they're, the, I, I'm they're looking at it now. trying to make a fuckable baby. I am... I'm on Team Jacob on this one. They made that baby so fuckable. <laughs> he can't uh, team, help himself. Team Jacob is Team Baby fucking. <laughs> hey, by the way, remember that Mormon thing? Oh, we'll get to that later. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so fucking the, the long hair picture of the CGI baby. That is the actual doll. The reason they made the CGI baby, because I think the actresses did the scenes with that, and they're like, you guys, you can't. You can't do this. You can't do that. Uh... This is a crime against God. <laughs> God's not even real. I I am a, an atheist, and I'm a confirmed atheist because atheism's just right. Nothing's real. But the, the, God would not allow that to exist. Like, hey, come on now. That's, Were there a God? Re- yeah, that would I not think, exist. I think a God would create itself to fucking stop this horrifying thing. But the CGI baby still terrible, still awful. Yeah, I still hate it. Good. No. Um. So yeah. So it's it's one of the worst things CGI's ever produced, and I've seen Leo the Lion. Anyway, while Bella holds it, it appears to touch her face and show it show her its first memory. I, I guess. What? So we didn't talk about it. Uh, vampires have powers, Isaac. Yeah. So not all vampires have powers. What? The ones that are are more special. So okay. I, but you know what's weird? Bella doesn't have a power. That's weird. It seems like she's that special. Oh, uh, spoiler! Uh, spoiler to that one. Anyway, so Renesmee's power is that. She can fucking just, sh- like, touch people and then show them her memories, I think. How is it, that a power? It's never expounded upon very well. It's probably better in the book. I mean, I'm sure it's still just, terrible. It's probably better explained every, in the book, I mean. Every time I shake hands with someone, they just see me jizzing for the first time in a hot tub and then my dad getting in it 30 seconds later. Oh, yeah, or it's her fucking getting pounded by Jacob. Oh, well, yeah, I'm on board with that. <laughs> Team Jacob! <laughs> you are truly the worst. That's a sexy um, baby, Larry. So yeah, other power. Edward uh, of the Cullen crew. Edward has the power to read minds, which you would think is like holy shit. That's fucking crazy. I think a lot of vampires the mind reading, but I think that's like base level vampire power. Um, and apparently nobody. Oh, we'll get to it later. And and psychic Cullen can see the future. And none of the other vampires in the Cullen family have powers. I don't think. If they do, it's never explained. In this movie. Um, so, yeah. So, the vamp- vampires with powers are like... It's like... They're like a Jedi, kind of. You know, you could be a special person in Star Wars, but a Jedi is like a Jedi. A Jedi is a Jedi. If you can use the Force, you can use the Force. They can use the Force. The vampire Force. The Vorse. Nope. Sounds like a horse on Viking. Um, Vampors. And in case you were curious... Of, force. of course, Bella the power. We'll get to that later. Um, first, got to talk about baby fucking. So, apparently... Team Jacob. Apparently, the baby... Uh, is growing at an insanely fast rate. Okay. 
Um, Jacob is very pushy about how it's time for Bella to put the baby back down again so she doesn't lose control and just fucking eat her own baby because I, we are supposed to like vampires I, I, is what the movie pushes. But they might just eat their own fucking babies like praying mantises. It's just... I, it is absurd. These vampires are terrible beings. They're horrible creatures. But we're they're the heroes. We're supposed to like the vampires. Yeah, I think you're being very anthropocentric, saying eating babies is, you know, a bad thing. Just because humans don't like eating babies doesn't mean it's wrong inherently. Cultural relativism, Larry. The praying manises have a right to live the way they want to live. Don't sentient. Sure they are. Or uh, eat babies. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't care. Fuck the praying mantis. Don't eat your babies, kids. That's, hey, that's... they pray. Of course they're sentient. How can it's... you pray without being sentient? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, hey, chihuahua. Um, so yeah, vampires are all tits and abs and probably huge honking dogs. Anyway, <laughs> Bella is suspicious why Jacob is so invested in her baby. And the Cullens all egg her on. So apparently... At the time of the baby popping out of his ex-lover's sweet stink, thank you, Isaac, <laughs> and You're welcome. Tang, a quote-unquote wolf thing happened. A wolf, what, what? A wolf thing? And An he, erection? And he imprints on her. Now, they spend a lot of time, and I mean a lot of time, frequently telling us, oh, it's not what you think. That exact phrase more than once throughout this movie. So imprinting, what it means is that um, basically, fuck it. And again, I didn't see, this is my, just what I've gathered. Uh, Jacob saw the baby and a wolf thing was in his bones where he was like, oh, that is the person, that is my soulmate and I need to protect them forever. That is the nice way of saying it where he saw that baby and thought, oh, when that baby is going to be my wife and I'm going to fuck it in its fuck holes. <laughs> This sounds an awful like the children of God pedophile cult. They, they insist, like he, he says the line at least twice. It's not what you think, yeah. because they make a lot of thou thinks thou dost protest too much. <laughs> yeah. They insist that it does not mean for certain that he is going to go on to fuck that baby. However, it's a moot point because he is in fact going to go on to fuck that baby. So yeah, yeah I really think that really you, you have much to do about nothing. <laughs> so why, why, Uncle Bob? Why are you always watching twelve-year-old female gymnastics? It's not what you think. Exactly, it's now, a sport. I, I'll settle down a little bit about the baby fucking thing because it's literally the easiest shot to lob across the bow of this franchise. Like that, I didn't know the exact circumstances, but I knew that that was one of the things that people took shots at Twilight for. Was like, why does this werewolf want to fuck a baby? I knew that I'm was coming. I just didn't know the what the context was, I'm and it's somehow even it. worse. I'm very glad you said shot to lob across the bow of this franchise instead of shot to lob across the baby of this franchise. <laughs> not yet. Not till it's older. <laughs> oh, God. Good thing it's growing fast. Mm. Isaac, good thing it's growing fast. Can you? <sighs> Isaac. You I'm going to withhold my comment. Uh, uh, again, chocolate milk boobs. There's got to be a way. They're modern to fuck a baby science. or milk boobs? Huh? To fuck... Ch nope, never no, mind. Chocolate, chocolate milk boobs. I don't want to fuck a baby. I don't want to fuck babies. I want to drink chocolate milk out of a boob. This is from a man who keep, keeps insisting Team Jacob. Team baby fucker. <laughs> uh, no, in, in the movie. I don't want okay, to fuck babies. Okay, okay. I want Jacob to fuck this baby because it's okay. a horrible puppet. So so, so I, I will be fair to a point for the people who are fans of this. I understand. I, I get what the I get what they're going for. That it's like, it, you know, it's a soulmate thing. Okay. Our kidding aside. Yeah, I get what you mean. You know, love is not all about sex. It's weird when an adult man sees a baby and is like, I'm going to be that baby's husband and protect it, for, protect it forever. Okay, sure. But like, he is going to go on to fall in love with her. So it's like, if he was just like her, I'll say butler, let's say, just for kicks, let's say butler. If he was going to be like, oh, that's Jacob. He's my best friend. He's protecting me forever because I'm a special vampire because I came from Bella's puss. So I have to be special because everything about Bella is special. <laughs> so, and if they, if it was like, okay, this is Jacob. He's my protector. He's like everything. He's just like, he is my person who's with me forever. But it's like, you know what? It's, that's, it's I'm fine with that. The fact that he's going to go on to fucking love her and fuck her really makes all this moot. So it's like, it really kind of is like, well, you know, I mean, okay, but he does eventually fuck the baby. Thankfully, she's yeah. an adult, I think. She's at least a teenager. I don't know how old he is. He might be fucking 200 years old. I don't know. Vampires and werewolves. It's all stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it really does not, it's not doing anybody any favors, okay? But just imagine if you, if you met a baby and you knew. I typically had, don't, on purpose. It had a medical condition where 
it aged 20 years in the span of one year. Oh, Isaac, uh, I'm sorry, have you seen this movie? <laughs> no. No, no, let, I, I, I save that to the end, because the, almost that exact point is going to come up at the end. But still, how weird would that be, to eye that baby up and be like, ah, 12 months from now, I'm going to be able to fuck that adult baby i seriously you're you're stealing my thunder from like the very last <laughs> paragraph of this movie but but i i do i i, I so I, okay i i do get what they were going for i i no, what myers no. was going for no 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 i i do I, I genuinely do i get the idea of it the problem is you fucking botched the execution so hard so hard what are we so fucking the baby hard. or executing it well or both I, I which one's worse honestly oh well, you do one first and the one later One's more ethical than the other. You are a. This is a terrible idea for. I'm. I'm just saying it's better to kill something before you fuck it than fuck something before you kill it. Yeah. <laughs> As a guy, we're gonna. We're That's gonna better. You, we need to get it's you a better. fucking uh, sensitivity consultant. Do we have money in the budget for that? It's. It's not as bad. It's less evil. <laughs> okay, this is just going nowhere. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we've spent a lot of time on that. And we'll. we'll uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll settle down about that. It's an easy shot to look across the bow. But the across long the and short of it is that we get Jacob out of the way as a potential rival for Bella by making him fall in love. I, uh, sorry, imprint on Bella's mm. daughter instead, because that's much better. Imprint on. Is that like a mushroom stamp? <laughs> Isaac, <laughs> you must stop. <laughs> you must relax. <laughs> I, you're talking about fucking babies. I can't. Anyway, <laughs> Bella gets rightfully. We are seriously eight minutes into the movie. <laughs> oh my god! I'm not. I don't think we've hit the ten minute mark at this point. Oh we may god. be getting close to it. Anyway, the, on the, seriously though, I think that there's two different points of this movie where I skipped literally twenty minutes, like with two cents, like not even joking. having seen the the fir- part one. That yeah, that makes sense. Like it, uh, we'll get to it. we'll get to it. Nothing so, happens at their wedding. Literally nothing, and it takes half an hour. Oh my god! Oh, I won't die. Ugh, fuck. So Bella gets rightfully very upset about the scenario, while Jake insists he can't control it. I know, I know, I know. Just let it go. We got a lot to get through. <laughs> mm, Bella throws nice. him out of the into the woods and yells at him, while the vampires all kind of watch and laugh. I guess vampires and werewolves don't like each other, but Jacob's just been hanging around, just fucking trying to get in Bella's pants for so long. They just kind of accept that he hangs out now. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Kristen Stewart. Again, terrible, terrible, terrible actress. Just, it's like she's never fucking, did, did she pre, Did she say these lines at any point before they fucking hit said action? I mean, just, oh boy, I, I god damn it. It is just on display. Anytime she tries to emote, it is uh, so terrible. So, anyway, um, yeah, Bella pushes back and yells at Eddie, why did I put Eddie? Jake, a bunch of other wolves show up. No idea who they are. They're just in wolf form, so I don't know if they're fucking wolves we know or not. And they growl at Bella. Jacob says, do you remember how much you wanted to be around me three days ago? That's gone, right? So I I, I guess they were romantic rivals, him and Eddie, as far as, like, not long ago. I I guess... They they must have just gotten married. Wait, wait, what? But they got married in the first movie. How long did she gestate the baby? I guess it's a super fast baby. Maybe it just popped out. Uh, I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know. She I'm, starts I'm, with the baby born and as a vampire. So I don't know. This is this. I'm not going to know. I'm just, and I, I refuse to look. So we'll find out later, I guess. So all his, like, I guess her whole reason for when to, they, they really fucking Steph Myers really writes herself out of a hole here by making him want to fuck this baby because instead of him, her, she has no feelings for him, romantic feelings for him anymore because apparently it was all related to, he had imprinted on her, I guess. And now because the baby Fucking, I guess the baby took the imprint with when it popped out the puss. Because now Jake is, like, all about the baby. All about, that's his whole bit is the baby. Think how much easier dating would be if you could just go mushroom stamp someone and have them fall in love with you. You are a bad man. We need, yeah, to, we need I, to talk. I, I <laughs> but the idea of mushroom imprinting. Mushroom stamp, Isaac. <laughs> what? It's the crazy. idea of imprinting is horrible? Yes, yeah. it is. Sounds a, little, sounds a little Mormon, doesn't it? A little guess. old school Mormon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I don't like religion, Larry. I don't, I don't like know. religion either. No, oh, man. I don't want to say anything against anybody here, but I mean, there's some weird parallels. Especially if you if know about Mormon has... history, some weird parallels. If your religion has anything to do with fucking. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, there was a whole, you know, married a lot of children back in the day. Yeah. This is a very weird parallel. Like, I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to fucking be that kind of podcast, but it's weird. 
It's it's pretty weird, guys. The fact uh, yeah, that she's I, a Mormon's I, a weird connection. Mm-hmm. I would say. So anyway, argue, argue, argue. Dumb magic. Bella is mad that Jake apparently. Oh, Jake nicknamed the baby Nessie because Jake, Team Jacob, fucking doesn't want to call the baby Renesme because he's the only one with a fucking brain. So but he Nessie? named her. He named that's her ne- the Loch Ness monster's nickname. Yeah, that's why Bella's so upset. Um, Did she really better, say that? Y- yeah, no. He says, "Oh, I just wanted to protect Nessie," and she's like. You name my wait. Sorry, let me get a couple. You name my baby after the Loch Ness monster. You <laughs> nicknamed my Walken? baby. <laughs> I, I, I can't act as badly as she acts. Sorry, <laughs> I am out of breath and want to die. And it's now we're now eleven minutes into the movie. Um, Bella throws one of the wolves into a tree, and everybody is sad that the puppy is briefly hurt. Apparently, these wolves have names and assumedly humans under the wolf form, but fuck it, that's not my problem today, so I don't care. They never matter until they get horribly murdered later, and even then, it's not like I knew who they are, so what do I give a shit? Anyway, Jacob keeps explaining himself as to what happened, and I guess they just, like, let him off the hook because next scene, literally next scene, he's just crashed on their couch, so I guess it's it's cool. And Bella's holding the baby, so I guess, like... They're like, yeah, she's not going to eat her own kid. I think we're not putting them. She's she's beautiful and amazing and, you know, whatever. So there, this never comes up ever again. Um, the other vampires, or if you're like me, you write campires because you have big stupid fingers and don't care, have gotten Bella a birthday present. Turn out it's a full, it turns out it's a fully furnished and beautiful cabin in the woods near the house. Unfortunately, the movie Cabin in the Woods, a far superior film, does not start playing, but that would be a dream. Um, so every building they show in this movie is like a massively gorgeous rich person's wonderland of a movie or, or mm. of a building, excuse me. And like it's it's just a, a, a wonderland of earthly delights. It's, I don't know what else to put it. In this cabin, it's like the, nestled in the most beautiful like northern like Can- Canadian northern Oregon where the fucking this goddamn story takes place, I don't know. Washington, Oregon, one of those north uh, western states. Mumbai. Um, yeah, Mumbai, of course. So it, it, everything's gorgeous, and the cabin is amazing, and it's um, they. Uh, so it's a par- it's a gift for them as like start their marital life together. Uh, even though because they don't sleep, it's just a fuck cabin. You know, just a, you know, we'll see. Yeah, I they got one around. of them. I got a yeah. fuck cabin. Sure you do. They look mm-hmm. around, and of course, it's delightful and magnificent and fully furnished with books and looks like a lived-in home. Uh, fully furnished closet for Bella and a room for the baby. Remember all this for in a minute. Mm. Um, they investigate, and then fuck. And honestly, the fucking is pretty... I don't know, it's normal. It's like regular movie sex. It's like nothing that even interesting to mention. It. I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's this not, is targeted for 13-year-old girls, so it's a lot yeah. of pillow, pillow biting and, like, nude backs and stuff, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I, I guess I expected more, but I, I'm a depressed. You're not gonna get a shit. nipple. No, 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 no. Come on, come on now, asshole. I know that. I just, I expected it to be more than it was, and it was nothing special. That's all. Because this is the fucking story that inspired that other idiot to write those Fifty Shades of Grey books. For Christ's sake, I expected yeah. something. What, so, like Edward sucking chocolate milk out of that booby? <laughs> no, man, that's just you. That's just I don't know. Shut the. I fuck think up. a lot of people would suck chocolate milk out of a booby. I would. I would. Yeah, come on. Come on. So the next day, I think, I don't know. They talk about how they can vampire fuck now instead of just human and vampire fuck. Bella marvels now since they never get tired and never have to eat or catch their breath. They literally may not know ever to stop fucking. Which how do ben, I become a vampire? Which Edward mentions is like a thing that I guess happened to another set of Cullens for like a decade. They just fucked for a decade. <laughs> People call this the greatest story of all, a love story of all time. I've heard, I've seen, I've no, seen no those one. words written. People say that, Isaac. Pop Star World Tour is the greatest love story of all time. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. Isaac, uh, I want to talk about vampire cum and vampire refractory periods. So, okay. when the human man ejaculates cum out of his dick. <laughs> Hi, Ma. Hi, sister. Hello, family. My hey. human man ejaculates cum out of his dick. There's something called the refractory period, in which the cum, the the factory within lives within the balls and the rest of the, <laughs> the other shit. I don't know how body works. I don't know how it works. I I don't. It all just kind of happens. You got to cook up a new load, right? There's a bunch of little chefs down there working so, on it. So how do how does the vampire refractory period work? Well, his little chefs are really fast. <laughs> yeah, they're speed moving around. <laughs> yeah, like. How many, like, how much cum can he produce in, like, one sex session? Like, I, it's, you know, every man has an individual limit, I think. I don't, I, as far as I'm aware. What's your most wanks in a day? 
I don't want to talk about that. Come on. No, I don't More want to talk. Five? I'll tell you about it when we're not recording. I have, th- there's some tiny scrap of me that wants to just have something left, okay? <laughs> 25. If you wanted to have something less, you wouldn't I'd, jerk off that much. <laughs> I'd be dead. I'd probably weigh a lot less. <laughs> um, so, and also, they go on to mention that they're much better at sex than other people how would either of them fucking know but you know right yeah because they waited till they were married i no longer wish to live Um, that's mm. so the next morning comes or it's been a week of fucking who knows the vampires and jacob are just kind of hanging out in this massive rich person house just uh, doing whatever i don't know what fucking jacob's doing here i don't know why they put up with him but okay whatever he's watching over his baby bride yes isaac yeah they get a phone call from a man we will later learn is bella's dad but nobody picks it up the cullens and jake urge her to give them the go-ahead to tell her dad that she's dead um this is never explored so i'm guessing this is more of the stuff that will be explained in part one and that's not my job today so fuck it um one of the cullens mentions that they're leaving uh jake is distraught but daddy cullen says that if people think bella is dead they have to get the fuck out of dodge why did they gift them a fully furnished cabin with all the fixings if they're fucking leaving like today (laughs) it's just wealth and excess on display uh yeah i don't know how the vampires have money but they're all fabulously wealthy well they've been living for 200 years they invested in ibm back when they were still working for the nazis honestly that's probably correct Uh, that that, actually that actually makes sense that's probably i'm sure that i'm guessing it comes up in the first movie i'm sure i I think no i'm sure they don't get into no no because i think bella's if we see we see bella's dad's house and they seem like lower middle class so i'm guessing it's a fucking explained as to why the vampires are so goddamn rich Mm. I do, I do have a prediction. So I imagine the baby is going to grow up, right? Okay. And it's going to have to be played by an adult actress, right? No, no. I'm going to stop no. you there. We don't. The, oh. the farthest we see uh, an actual plot of the movie, I think she gets to like age seven. Damn. We, My we guess get like was going to be Roseanne Barr. We, <laughs> <laughs> the last scene is her as like a teenager. But that's it's like a as the credits are rolling, so it hardly played comes. by Roseanne Barr, heavily makeup. It was she the one who got canceled for being awful? Uh, yeah, probably okay. more than once. Well, I yeah, um, okay. So, fucking, I don't know why, but the whole thing with the cabin really pissed me off. So anyway, <clears throat> Jacob goes to see Bella's dad, who is ominously cutting logs in his backyard. I'm gonna save you a lot of time here because Bella's dad doesn't fucking pay out to anything narratively and never matters um i I just gotta really cut this whole scene short um long and short of it is that jacob fumbles his deception role and realizes he doesn't have the heart to lie to bella's dad and tell him that his daughter's dead so instead he tells her or he excuse me he tells dad that bella changed but doesn't say oh she's a fucking vampire now (laughs) instead for some reason he takes his clothes off and turns into a werewolf. What? Uh, no what? reason what? never explained. He, he says to dad, like, well, Bella's fine now. I guess the dad thought she was going to die. I don't know the story. I don't, not my job today. So, um, and then, like, the dad is like, what do you mean she changed? And Jacob is like, oh, here goes nothing. And he fucking takes his clothes off, turns into a werewolf. And then the next scene, he's, just, he's back and the Collins are mad at him. They're like, why'd you reveal that you're a werewolf? Um, <clears throat> I just, I don't know. Why did he do that? So he, I'm I'm guessing the end of Breaking Dawn Part One, Bella gets like fatally <laughs> wounded and has to be turned into a vampire in order to survive. That I, that is what I gathered. I think okay. the pregnancy goes south and fucking she. Oh. That I think that because because she has not met the baby. I my guess and they kind of there's a line that kind of mentions it, but not. It's very vague. I think the pregnancy must go south and then. She uh, has to be vampired to save her life. So the hideous baby that Taylor Lautner's hard for rips its way out of her vagina, and Edward has to turn her. Okay, I, I think that is yeah. I think that's we've gathered. That's what happened. That's great. Yeah. No, no reason ever explained why Jacob turns in front of a wolf, to a wolf in front of her dad. Uh, the only this is the only good thing I have to say about this movie. And boy, is it weak. I think they did a pretty good job on the werewolf CGI models. They look pretty pretty solid. Like the fair enough. It, it's 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 great work on the werewolves. They look very nice. They very and we all know that Isaac loves tight wolves. Uh, so Jacob don't call tells, my dog a wolf. It's your wife, Isaac. Be kind. Jacob, no, we make jokes about me fucking the dog all the time. We call it daddy oh, doggy time. You're you truly are horrible. I know I am. But yeah, I, I I I'm not saying I'm not. I don't actually fuck the dog. I just joke about it. 
Yeah. Have you? One day there's going to be a bunch of Christians on your lawn trying to exercise a demon. Yeah. Like, how did you know they were out there? <laughs> Are they that loud? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Jacob tells Bella and Edward what he did, and they're pretty mad. They just kind of talk at him. He says he didn't reveal their secret, as Bella admonishes him that the Volturi will kill anybody who knows about them. The Volturi are the bad guys in this movie. The bad I vampires? Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that what they are, because it's never explained, but again, I, this is the fifth movie in a series. I'll, I, It's not explained because they don't have to at this point. I'll, I'm not going to hold them to task there. So the Volturi, as far as I can gather, are like the vampire cops, but it's they're based on like ancient Rome, kind of. They're like old school, like... The laws of vampirism must be followed. And the Cullens are like living in Seattle. So they're fucking Seattleites. <laughs> I mean, that really, that's what it is. So All right. the Volturi are the bad guys and they like enforce vampire law. I get, cause it's like people aren't supposed to know vampires exist. So they're, that's right, like their okay. whole job is to make sure. And they're, they're dickheads about it is okay. kind of what I've gathered. Um, oh, and also Jacob tells Bella's dad that Renesme. I never gonna get tired of saying that name. Is their <laughs> niece that they adopted? So if I follow the timeline right, Bella's dad. Something happens. We probably think the baby was <laughs> biting its way out of her puss, and uh, fucking they had to take her to wherever to recover. So Bella's dad is like not sure if Bella's alive, and then Jacob is like, "Oh, it, it two days passed because I know she said she was in a coma for two days. Two days minimum pass." And then Jacob comes down and is like, hey, Bella's alive. Uh, by the way, she's totally fine now. And also, she adopted a baby in that time. <laughs> like, great, great fucking plan, guys. Jesus. Um, and I'm sure the dad doesn't question it. Uh, not really, no. So this guy comes up to him. I, I guess they at least know each other. Yeah, okay, I just explained. Sorry. Uh, so th the main three bicker, Edward says having her dad nearby. Oh, fuck, I forgot about that. I forgot about this. <laughs> Edward says that having her dad, because he's, he's on his way to visit. He says having her dad nearby her will be the equivalent to Bella of sticking a white hot branding iron down her throat. Because he's a, he's a human. He's got human blood in his veins. Even though oh. Bella just resisted a climber on her very first hunt, which even right. ancient vampires can't do because she's so special and beautiful and powerful and white or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Everybody bickers. And you think it'd be easier not to suck your dad than suck a stranger. There is a lot of talk in this movie about, like, we can't have dad. Because dad's the only human they interact. Dad is one of two humans in this whole movie. Uh, uh, no, 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 I lie. There's a third, but he's in the movie for 40 seconds. But, like, um, it, everyone is, like... If he's near the vampires, they're going to be uncontrollable and fucking drink his blood. But in the but first fucking movie, Edward he's in school. Heist. Yeah, right. with humans the right. whole time. And like Bella has been palling around with these motherfuckers forever. And she's been a vampire for the course of one movie. Fuck, but somehow man. everyone is like, because dad is coming. And they're like, at one point she says, oh, 20 vampires in a room with a human. It's going to get pretty dicey. But it's like, what, fucking, what What are you assholes been doing the last four, four movies? I don't know. I, um mm. Yeah, it's real stupid. So, uh, Dad is on his way. The other Cullens, the other Cullens try to give Bella human lessons by teaching her how to move normally and not super fast, and remember to breathe and yada yada yada. Bella was a human on Tuesday. <laughs> it's fucking Friday now. These motherfuckers are like two hundred years old, and somehow she's forgotten how to be a human. She's worse at it than these idiots. <laughs> I'm just flabbergasted. Also, irritatingly, they mention, and it's like a throwaway line, but it's like, oh, uh, do you, you're sitting too straight. Humans don't have good posture. It's a shit worse than... Hey, hey, Steph. Hey, Steph Meyer. Go fuck yourself. I slouch and I'm proud. We exist. <laughs> so we get a scene here with Bella's dad and Bella reuniting. It's long and ultimately pointless, so I'm going to give you the running notes. He meets Bella and Edward wearing their anti-vampire contacts, so he doesn't know they're all undead. The mm. silence doesn't mean a goddamn thing, so let's just blow by it. Um, Bella's dad, this, like, I think they're trying to fucking, t I guess he was more important in the other movies. I'm guessing when she was a human, he mattered more. I don't know if she had a mom in the other ones. I don't give a fuck. Not my job today. But, like, he never finds out that she's a vampire. Ever. Like, the whole rest of the movie. So why, okay, he knows she's alive. Great. What, what are we doing here? Why are we doing this? Why are you doing this to me? Well, you had to I stretch two movies out of this. Th this is an hour and 55 minutes long. God damn. Well, uh, there's a lot of credits, so I don't think it's actually that long. It's dumb. Um, yeah. So he, she ultimately promises she won't she won't leave him again. I guess he's had a sad life or some shit. I don't know. So she the plan now is not to fucking leave town. So good thing they got a cabin, I guess. 
Um, they introduce him to the CGI baby, and he appropriately dashes it to the ground before shrieking in horror. Uh, <laughs> after Dad leaves, one of the Cullens praises Bella for being super special awesome for not eating her dad or her baby. One of the big, tough Cullens wants to go toe-to-toe with her, but Edward warns him that Bella is the strongest one in the house. Isaac, Bella's the strongest vampire in the entire franchise. Wait, also, is the baby not a vampire? We'll get to that. Ah, uh, what we'll is happening? That. We get, we get a backyard playing with the boys scene where Bella arm wrestles a big muscular Cullen and Isaac, she just wins handily. And he's, he's like a big boy. He's like a big shoulders, big boy. Fuck. He's he might, he's so vampire. big he might be partially CGI. There's no, there's no explanation of why she's the strongest vampire. Zero. I Zero. can't abide that. Larry, tell me different. No, I, Isaac, I just was Just lie low. to me. Lie no. to me. No. Lie, tell me I'm pretty. <laughs> I won't lie to you. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so he, she fucking easily uh, arm wrestles this dude and then starts smashing a bunch of big rocks with no effort, literally no effort to prove how strong and special she is. <sighs> she then goes to stand in the sunlight to show off the sparkle skin, even though they really don't show it very well. It, but I, I only know that she was doing it because I know vampires in the scene sparkle. I think they forget to actually put the sparkle effect on her, but you know, whatever. Um, Kristen Stewart then does possibly her worst line reading of the worst written line in the entire series so far. My my time as a human was over. I never felt more alive. I was born to be a vampire. <laughs> mm. I, can I propose a two-part episode where we just fucking leave it at that and start over? Because that is such a fucking... <laughs> oh my god, that's such a humdinger of a line to leave oh. off on. Jesus Christ. So, uh, we just took a tiny bathroom break. Uh, because this is It's gonna not probably, that tiny. It's probably going to be our longest episode ever. But fucking timing is perfect. Because I checked my phone while, while Isaac was taking a, a horse dong shit. I don't know what that was. Uh, yeah, and I have a big wiener and I peed out of it. My girlfriend had texted me, uh, I'm watching your vampire. I forgot he was in Harry Potter 4. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, oh, it's Edward. He's in Harry Potter 4. <laughs> so oh, funny. right. <laughs> of, guy, fucking, of course this works out. She's watching Goblet of Fire right now. <laughs> yes. And she's like, oh, I just saw your vampire. Like, no, it's not my vampire. <laughs> oh, he's your vampire now. No. Oh, God. All right. Where were we? Oh, right. She was born to be a vampire. Mm. Mm. Chef's kiss of a line. Thanks, Steph. Uh, We get a weird wordless scene with Jacob shaking hands with what I assume is another werewolf and Bell Word getting a letter from mysterious Volturi congratulating them on being a new porn. Wow, that line. I just wrote that like a son of a bitch. Uh, Bella gets a letter from the mysterious Volturi congratulating her on being a newborn vampress. Um, apparently, Renesme is growing up way too fast, and everybody is kind of concerned she's going to die before them. So, again, at this point it had not been explained, but I sort of figured it out, and I think we've really nailed it with what we figured out. So, Bella is the... Uh, I'm sorry, God damn it, Renesme is the baby of Vampire Edward and Human Bella. So they must have okay. fucked while Bella was human, and yes. then something, something. She's a vampire, which I think we've, I think we've probably nailed it on the head. Baby clawed its way out. Yeah, in order to fuck Taylor Lautner. So maybe it was all Eddie's vampire cum or something that she turned into a vampire. I don't know. But uh, oh, Bella man. and Jacob are are out with blessedly now like six year old Renesme. So CGI is gone. It's actually a human girl now. Thank God. Played by Roseanne Barr. Played by Roseanne Barr, and uh, yep, I don't she's know why. Got, she, she's got shoes on her knees, so she looks small. <laughs> she's actually played by Edith from All in the Family. <laughs> by the way, Glenn Miller. Bl- oh, that's a long line, <laughs> god damn it. Ah, shit, I did Archie's line. Fuck. All right, so yeah, they're uh, fucking, this, so Renesmee's flying around catching snowflakes because vampires fly. Vampires fly! Fun fact, keep that in mind, vampires fly. Keep, that's important. Fly, like planes? Helicopters. Like helicopters, yep. Just fucking fleshy blades come out of their back and <laughs> flip around. Like no, tails so from Sonic they, the Hedgehog. They fly like Superman. Yeah. I mean, uh, not... No, Superman flies cool. And Superman... Well, okay. th- spoiler, Superman does not fly cool. Compared to these fucking morons, Superman flies cool. Well, he's got a cape. That makes it. That's yeah. why he has a cape. Why does no Batman capes. have a cape? Um, I had some... a dream I was wearing a cape for some reason. <laughs> That's all I remember about the dream. I was wearing a cape. It just came to me. Uh, I think Batman's cape is like uh, I think he it's like fire retardant or something. I, and sometimes he uses it as like a tool to like you know White hide or that's what I use my cape for in my dreams. Well, his cape is you are one track mind and it's all come. Well, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, then also his cape. I is have black. too much of it. 
You're a regular Edward. <laughs> um, so yeah, reminder, they are in the middle of what is essentially the Canadian forest, so they're actually nowhere. Um, I don't know how much time has passed, but it has not been that long. So uh, Renesmee is growing up very quickly, is the long and short of this here. Um, so uh, while she's flying about, way off in the distance, she is spotted by some blonde lady vampire... Um, Bella calls her by name, so apparently they know each other and we're supposed to know who this is. Of course, I don't, and that's not my job today. Uh, it's Blondie, Sookie Stackhouse. It's not Sookie Stackhouse. Oh. I would love to see her again. And I hate it. Sookie was one of the worst parts of that show, and I'd love to see her again. And I would drink chocolate milk out of her boobs six ways to Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> How are those divorce proceedings coming along? <laughs> They've been filed. That's okay. That's I'm hiring good. a lawyer. He's a raccoon. <laughs> I think you can hire a record, you can just bribe them. I, um, I gave him, I opened the lid to the trash can and said, you're my lawyer now. And he was like, <laughs> funny enough, that would also work on me. Uh, <laughs> so, so Blondie has seen uh, Renesmee flying around and then she fucking takes off and they can't catch her. Uh, back at the house, Papa Collins says that apparently Blonde Lady was coming to reconcile with. I guess she knew them and they're on the outs or whatever, but she was, somebody told her, somebody told them she was on the way to reconcile. Um, Eddie starts randomly playing the piano and everybody gets kind of caught up in it. Uh, okay. We cut to the secret, creepy underground lair of the Volturi, the evil vampires. There's a lot of them, and I'm going to ignore basically all of them, but I'm pretty sure that like five or six of them are named characters. Um, the main one is the only one that really matters here. Uh, Christ, I don't even know how to describe it. So it, the main villain vampire, uh, which I forget his name, I'll have it written down later. It's like somebody is doing a very piss-poor cosplay of Tom Cruise from Interview with the Vampire. Which is a movie I kind of like and kind of don't. I don't know. I still need it, to see that. It's worth seeing, if nothing else. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's interesting. So Brown it looks Pitt's in that too, right? Yes. And okay. the main, the the fucking main villain looks like he's doing a bad cosplay of Tom Cruise in that movie. Um, and he's the main villain. I remember his name right this second. We see blonde lady spy vampire who saw Renesme is snitching on the Cullens about quote unquote something terrible. This very much interests the villain vampire who apparently also has the power to read minds. By holding somebody's hand, I think, I guess. I don't know. He can read minds by, like, holding hands with somebody. Oh, okay. Main villain. Um, back at the Cullen house, uh, Renesme, the daughter of the beautiful and strong and brilliant and resilient and radiant Bella, is already playing the piano at an advanced level because she is so amazing and wonderful because she came out of Bella's life-giving, fantastical, and wonderful womb. As everyone is admiring her because she's so amazing, suddenly Psychic Cullen, who's the Cullen who can see the future, has a vision. And she sees a bunch of the Volturi soldiers marching through the snow towards them in the future. She reveals this to everyone and tells them that blonde lady vampires sold them out. They figure out that she must have seen Renesme and thought she was an immortal child. Capital I, capital C. I'd love to read you Papa Cullen's exact lines, but it would take too long. But it does start with the lines, the immortal children were very beautiful, very enchanting. So, basically... Is he played by Jeff Goldblum? Because he should have been. That would have been, that would have saved this whole franchise. Because <laughs> Jeff Goldblum can do no wrong. Uh, He's a treasure. He really is. So basically, it's children that got turned into vampires, and because they have the minds of children, they like don't know how to not stop being a vampire. They don't know how to hide. So they just eat like whole villages. Uh, and we cut to a flashback to back in the day of ye olden times. The Volturi come across a small, bull-cut, mop-headed boy who has just gobbled up a whole group of peasants. As such, they destroy him by cutting off his head and setting the body on fire, which seems to be the only way to actually, like, fully kill a vampire in this universe. Fair enough. And I didn't catch this the first time, but apparently, in this flashback, which, like, is just kind of Daddy Cullen talking, it's sort of one of those, you know, like... Oh, and the ancient, the war was so rough, and then we're seeing the war footage, kind of, that sort of thing. Um, and he's not there. But this flashback is the blonde spy lady and her two blonde sisters, which we'll get to. And apparently their mother was the one who made this child in the flashback and gets her head cut off. So they've got, like, they've been around for a while, and they've got some kind of grudge, I guess, against the villains. Even though the one of those sisters just sold out the Cullens to the villain. So I don't know what the fucking... I, again, I, I don't yeah. know what is explained where, and I don't give a fuck, and they don't matter. I don't know any of their names. It's so. almost like I shouldn't have had you watch the last movie first. Yeah, it's almost like anything, yeah. literally anything other than that would have been helpful, mm -hmm. you fucking yeah. piece of human slime. Funny how that is. So, uh, anyway, since Renesme was born and not bitten, she technically doesn't fall into those parameters as she's a halfy. Jacob wants to fight, but one of the other one of the other Cullens says, "Quote: The Volturi's offensive weapons are too powerful." Yeah. So, what weapons? The, they have vampires. Weapons. They have vampires. What do vampires have? 
Wait, the vampires are the weapons? The vampires are the weapon. What kind of like weapons? Steven Steven Seagal's a weapon, a living oh. weapon. Yeah, he's the he's the only man who is a weapon because right. he's just pure danger. I heard he once looked at a man and that man then shat his pants. <laughs> no, sorry, it was him. He shat his own pants. Yes, Excuse yes. <laughs> um so the 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 Volteri have this brother and sister and or husband and wife and or incestuous siblings. I don't know the relationship. But the vampire, the evil vampires, there's like this pair of the boy vampire and a girl vampire who are supposed to be like very powerful and everybody's afraid of them. And I don't think I mentioned it later, so I'll just fucking get to it now. The girl vampire seems to have the power to just put, make, give people pain. She can just like make you fall. It's like, uh, speaking of Harry Potter, thank you, baby. Uh, what's that fucking spell in Harry Potter that the makes The Cruciatus you, Curse. You're the worst. You fucking dork. I you like Harry Potter. You absolute nerd. So, yeah. So I like it's Emma that. Watson. It's, you are just the worst. It's that, uh, it's like, it's excruciating pain. And the boy vampire can, like, cover you in shadows. It's like the darkness spell from D&D. It seems very lame, but everybody's afraid of it. And, like, these two are a force to be reckoned with, I guess. And everybody's afraid that they're just gonna kill them. Even and, of though, course, Bella's gonna mop the floor with them. Oh, Isaac, so handily. <laughs> it's, like, not even a challenge. Jesus. Um... So I don't know. Everybody's afraid of these guys, but I, I they are. So whatever. Um, yeah, Eddie comes up with an idea that since they can't fight them, they'll try diplomacy. So the Cullens are going to basically split up to ask all their vampire friends from around the world to help them. So what happens now is a 12-minute scene of the Cullens going around the world to collect all their vampire friends. And Isaac, I found out, because I did ask about this, because I, I looked at this scene, and I'm like, well, I'm like taking some notes, and I'm like, none of this fucking matters. So... I don't want to talk about it. So I asked my friends who had seen this, hey, do any of these vampires, I know the blonde ladies are kind of vaguely important. Do any of these other vampires they go to collect, are they in any of the first three movies or four movies? They're not. So guess what? I'm not going to fucking talk about them because for most of these scenes, they don't even have lines. Some of them have like, I think one guy has like a very, very, very brief romantic storyline with one of the blondes, but like, fuck it. I, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit and fuck it and fuck you. I don't need to do it. So this it's just, already... they just want a big showdown with a shit ton of vampires, right? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. And, like, a lot of these vampires have powers. None of them matter. They get Rami Malek, who was fucking... But, and they have different powers? Yes. Rami Malek <sighs> is, like, really strong because he has the power. He's basically a, a bender from Avatar The Last Airbender. He's got, like, he can use earth and wind and fire and water. That's his fucking bit. He can use all like of a... them. God damn it. There's a pair of Amazonian women vampires... Who like can make people blind, and there's what? one, and there's the blonde, the two blonde sisters of the evil spy vampire sister. One of them has electricity powers that she can like. She's basically got like her hand is uh, like a stun baton, but it's very powerful. Does so, she shoot electricity out of her fingers? No, it's all by touch. Oh, that's lame. Yes, I agree. Um, her hand <laughs> jobs must be. Whew. Yeah, but I only mentioned, like, none of these people matter. There's a bunch of them, and there's, like, uh, seriously, I skipped 12 to 15 minutes here. Um, and, like, fuck it. Rami Malek only bring up because, uh, like, of the he bring, he, the dumbest scene in the whole movie happens, and he's involved. But, like, none of these people matter at all. They're not important. Is um, Rami Malek's superpower his ex extensive range of vocals? No, he's, no, he's the bender guy. <laughs> okay, okay. He can hit six octaves. <laughs> um... The only other thing I do want to mention, and that don't matter, there's two absolutely nonsensical, plucked straight out of Ant, I wrote in Rand, and Rice, Bavarian <laughs> vampires. Fucking, they're like from Bavarian castles. They have stupid wigs and funny accents. Oh my god. And I'm just so tired. I'm just so tired. The but hey, I got to skip like head, fucking right? 12 minutes of movie, so screw it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that works. None of this affects the plot. <laughs> the best part is, Isaac... At this point in the movie, the plot's already decided. The movie's the move. This is going to sound idiotic. The movie is basically over. <laughs> You'll okay. find out. Okay. Um, okay. So the group of the new group of vampires and their werewolf allies. There's also a couple fucking wolves that I. They don't even explain who the wolves are, where they come from. Wait, just I know Jacobs. I no, they're werewolves. I say wolves okay. are werewolves. Uh, I know Jacobs a werewolf. He just has a pack of werewolves that like are cool to let him tell him what to do. Don't know anything about. Him. Yeah. Not my job today. <laughs> don't care. Don't tell me. Um, so everybody's having like a confab about what's going on. Psychic Cullen has left without telling anybody where she has gone, leaving Bella a cryptic note in a torn out page of a book, The Merchant of Venice. Um, apparently what she says is just gather as many allies as you can to witness that Renesmee is not a immortal child. She's half human, so she's only half bad. 
Um, apparently, fucking the big bad villain Tom Cruise guy has been trying to like get psychic cullen into his crew for a long time i sincerely hope that or it's very unclear as to why he wants it's rapey i don't know he wants her bad i guess because her power of seeing the future is very strong so i don't know it's never really explained but again i'm willing to believe that that may have been explained before so fine um you'd be a lot better gambling yeah i agree Everybody is pretty low down on their chances, but are concerned that one day the big bad villain is going to come after everybody who has a vampire power regardless. So they are agreed to like, hey, let's try and talk it out, but if we have to fight, we'll fight with you guys. Um, that night, we get a scene of the main villains, the brother and sister duo. They're so scary. Chasing down a fellow vampire in the streets of a city. Dublin. The big, the big bad evil guy, by the way, is named Arrow. Arrow. A-R-O. I already forget how they pronounce it because the movie's Arrow. bad. Arrow. Arrow. Uh, Gotta roll that R. Uh, actually, why don't I write this scene down? Nothing happens. They kill a vampire. Who gives a fuck? All right. The next day, we get Bella training with her powers. Because, of course, Bella has powers. The amazing, beautiful, amazing, captivating Bella has vampire powers. She has a shield power that makes her immune to mind reading, but apparently can also block out other powers and attacks. Also very much like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> so her power just negates all the other powers? It's like, sh- not negate. She can just, like... It's a shield. It's like she can prevent people from feeling pain or getting hurt. I don't know. It might. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, sure. It might as well be. It never comes up if like, that's why Edward can't read her mind. I don't fucking care. Yes, it does whatever you say it did. Sure. She's the best. Have you gotten that through your thick skull yet? Huh. Oh, so the blonde sisters and Eddie have her try to learn to extend her shield out to block others because she just, she like, it's been uncon. Wait a minute. She had this power when she wasn't a fucking vampire because he couldn't read her mind before. What? He couldn't read her mind. Which you, I hate this fucking series and this movie. And I'm what just, is he? What is happening? I don't even know. She's got a power. And it's never explained why, but she's always had it. But I don't know. But like, why? all you have to do is like, because she has a dead mom, right? I don't know. Does she? I'm pretty sure her mom's not in the picture. Like at her the beginning not, of the first movie, her mom's not in this fifth movie. I, I think it's it's her like a solo a dad friend. thing. But okay. all you have to do is her mom is some kind of magic. And poof, explained. I mean, that's very lazy, but it would be something. Lazy. Yes, it would be something. <laughs> they don't do that. God damn it. Oh, God, I'm so mad. So, yeah, so fucking, uh, they try to, the, the blonde who has the lightning powers keeps almost killing Edward until Bella has to, like, basically, she makes Edward a damsel in distress until Bella extends her powers to protect him, too. And uh, she's even stronger now, and thank God for a minute there. I was worried that Bella was not going to be the best empire, but she is. So my um, my and, lovely wife just texted me. Apparently, the mom is not dead, and the parents are divorced. It, which it, Isaac, I I love it, and respect your wife so much. Don't don't do this to me. If she texts you more Twilight facts, don't tell me them. I don't want to lose any respect for her. Oh no no no! Yeah, you she she knows she knows it all. Great, <laughs> great. But like, oh, that would be so easy. Like, her mom's an angel, and just fuck, leave it at that. Her mom's dead, and she's an angel. And Bella's ma- and magic angel that is vampire. What, that is what Supernatural the show would do. Like, and that show is bad, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, that would be stupid, but that would at least make sense in and of itself. Yeah. Which would be better than this. It just She just has a power, and I guess she's always had it because Edward can't read her mind. So I don't care, and I want to die. <laughs> if Edward could read her mind, he'd be like, man, you really don't need a good pussy, do you, Eddie? Bella... <laughs> <laughs> Bella and Renez may have a little scene where Bella reads the kid a story and the kid asks if they're all going to die. So, you know, wholesome stuff here. Bella re-examines the note that Psychic Cullen left behind while she and Edward chat about what's to come. Edward wants to fuck, but Bella is too distracted for vampire cock, a, pleasure, a, a phrase Isaac has never said before. He reminds her that she's amazing before drawing a bath while El, uh, Bella figures out the message that Psychic Cullen left for her. It was on a torn out page of The Merchant of Venice in which Bella then finds... She goes to the bookcase and opens the... She fast runs to the bookcase and f- opens the Merchant of Venice and finds another message only for her. Bella, in voiceover, tells us that Psychic Cullen specifically left her a puzzle that only she could find. Since I guess Aro, the villain, can read minds and wouldn't be able to read hers. Uh... So Isaac, Isaac, 
Isaac, not only is she the strongest and the most beautiful, she's also the smartest. <laughs> because nobody would have ever thought to look in the book the note was written from. It's literally torn from the first page. And she still manages to pat herself on the back, figuring that out. To be fair, The March of Venice is trash. Just Shakespeare's worst work. I've never read it. I Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> And it's the note, by the way, it's just to go meet this guy in Seattle. That's the note. That's the whole note. That's the big secret? Yeah, yeah. Wait, is the guy she's meeting Guy Fieri? Oh, Isaac. Oh, is he going to make her some sliders? You wish it was it mattered in, oh, in any way you wish it mattered. It's going gonna to be Guy Fieri. You're just tricking me. Guy You're Fieri, trying to keep please. me off the scent. Next day, Bella and Jacob yeah. take the baby, the one he wants to fuck, remember, that's his baby bride, uh, to see <laughs> Bella's dad so they don't have to bring him to a house of well, hungry vampires. Well, also not vampires. a baby anymore. It's, a, it's Roseanne Barr with shoes on her knees. It's just easy to say baby he wants to fuck. It just makes me happy. Yeah, okay. That's Taylor Lautner wants to shove his fucking no, hot Taylor dog. No, Taylor Lautner is a fine man and has done nothing wrong. Let's, he wants let's to shove take his hot easy. dog in take the it bun of Roseanne Barr's sweet buttocks. I mean, who wouldn't? With a little bit of relish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's a fine man. He's done nothing wrong. Uh, not a great actor. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of want to take an artistic picture of a dick and ass cheeks with like relish and mustard on it. <laughs> You're like actually a photographer too. That's disgusting. Yeah. No, I feel like that would be a really like, like that might be the kind of picture that wins me a Pulitzer or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where people are like, oh, wow, that's that's a comment on society and consumerism. Hmm. You couldn't hmm. find a Pulitzer on a map. Next day, Bella and Jacob <laughs> take the baby. Yeah, I said that. So... They have boring and shitty small talk proving that Steph Myers nor the filmmakers, actors, or director have ever conversed, conversed with another human being before. Because they're fucking... This is like the only small talk in the whole movie. And it's so strained and fucking lame that it's truly like these two characters have never had a conversation in their lives. I, I don't get it. I, I truly don't understand how it could get to this far. And it's like... You ever have... It's like it, it, fucking Bella and Jacob in this conversation here... They were lovers of some sort before, I think, or he was at least like well, they close. held hands. Right. I They're mean, they, I, yeah, they don't they didn't sleep together, obviously, but like they were in some manner of almost being in a relationship or in a relationship. I don't know. And um, but they talk. It's like watching a person. In, you ever taken an Uber? Actually, no. I have. I've taken two Ubers now, and both times it's like really awkward small talk. I wish would end. That's yeah, okay. what watching this was like. Was like Jacob and Bella having like he was she was his Uber driver. Larry, I was like, Larry, weren't you two fucking, like, about to bone a couple of days ago? <laughs> I haven't gotten a haircut in two years because I don't like awkward small talk. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. I just pretend to fall asleep. That makes sense. I mean, just, like, not asleep, but just, like, it, almost meditation. You shut your eyes and then don't offer any conversation. Just, just keep saying right. your mantra over and over again. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I'm a Buddhist monk. I don't know if, you can, if, you, can, if you can tell from my big belly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Lord, I am losing the plot of my what life. What plot? What plot? There's no not plot. Not this movie. Not in this we... movie, not in our lives. There's no plot. So, yeah, fucking shut up. So, uh, this is going to be a wild episode, guys. If you're still on, I don't even know. We're we're six out of nine pages. There's still a lot to go. <laughs> this will be our longest episode. Uh, yeah, I think at this point, yeah. Uh, and we have some a little extra at the end, too, to get into. So, they have, uh, fuck, yeah, they don't know how to fucking talk to each other. Bella drops Jacob and Renesme off and drives to follow Psychic Cullen's message, which I, yeah. It, it's the whole thing. Okay. So the whole fucking thing is Psychic Cullen left her a note that only she could solve because she's so brilliant and fucking amazing and mm -hmm. got a great ass. Crystal and Stewart, like Brainiac, great ass, chocolate milk boobs. Yep. Yep. All those things. Mm -hmm. And um, the message, she goes to meet this guy in Seattle who like Psychic Cullen and her husband have like done a deal with him. And he's like, I've got your delivery, Miss Bella, amazing ass, whatever. And what it is, the restaurant they meet in is super fancy because of course it is because everybody's rich. And like... This human gives her a file with a passport in it for Jake and Renesme so they can, like, flee the country. And fuck in Uzbekistan where there is no Isaac, <laughs> age of consent. <laughs> Isaac, this never comes up again. What are you talking about? You need to shut up, Larry. It you never comes up mouth. again. She's, like, kind of bummed because she, the whole thing is to, like, the, the whole message here is that uh, Renesme and Jacob are gonna get away for sure. She has seen it in the future, but you and Edward are not. Like, you're not gonna be in Renesme's life anymore because there's no passport for you. Couldn't afford it, I guess. Get it for fucking insurance, I suppose. You can't or watch just, your baby. Or just get tell her, call her, give, give her a call on a fucking phone, you stupid idiot. But yeah, so 
Like that, she takes, I suppose it takes solace in the fact that Renesmee is going to live. Guess what? Never, literally, literally never comes up again. I, 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 so wait, did, ja- did, ja- did Jacob and Baby just ride off into the sunset of good sex? No, she drops him off with her dad. But like, do they have a follow up after that? Or we just assume they're, they're all fucking? No, are you talking about the end of the movie or now? I don't even know, man. No, she, like, drops them off at fucking daddy day camp and then goes to Seattle and comes back and picks them up and then goes back to the Cullen house. I, I don't like this movie. You don't like it, huh? No. Man, the first time I watched this, I was just, I, I was like, ah, it's dumb, whatever. Somehow, doing notes, man, it just made everything worse. I was not that upset the first time. I was just kind of like, ah, it's just dumb. It's just dumb, but whatever. No, it's so bad, man. Yeah, I, it's, it seems like the kind of movie where if you just watch it, it's, yeah, it's one level If you level try to dumb. fucking make sense of the plot, it's exactly. nonsense. Exactly, yeah. Because, like, she goes home. And she sees that, like, oh, Bella's there with Edward, and it's, like, happy. But it's, like, she, like, she writes a note, a letter for Renesmee and packs her a bag for her and Jake to get the hell out of Dodge. With a bunch of condoms in it. (laughs) We never, like, see the path. It's never implied that, like, they're gonna... Wait, she, she doesn't like she doesn't send she doesn't send her to the airport. But Jacob and the six year old really just flee together. That is what Psychic Cullen is telling them to do by giving them the. At this point, everybody's cool with Jacob and the baby. They're like, okay, yeah, it's kind of happens off screen, I guess. Where they're like, all right, he's definitely gonna protect this baby. We're sure of that. He's probably gonna fuck it. We're gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> God damn it! I'm not kidding. That's in the last scene. Ah. Um, uh, so. And that that's also the linchpin that holds the whole, he's not going to actually fuck the baby. He's absolutely going to fuck the baby. But we'll get to that at the end. Um, the idea is that it's giving them an untraceable way for Jacob and fucking Renesmee to get on the lam forever. Even though they okay. don't actually do that. And here's here's why. This whole fucking set of scenes oh. with the whole mystery that Psychic Cullen has left behind for them is utterly pointless. We'll get to that in the battle. Um, so, yeah. Uh, fucking... Uh, Bella's like writing a letter to Renesmee and then one of the new weird side vampires that I haven't bothered to mention, he comes in and makes fun of her for trying to run away even though she's actually not, which whatever. But I only bring this up because on the wall behind him is like a wall hanging is like a literally a four and a half foot tall parasite. Just a thing that's on their wall. Why? It's, it's, it's Isaac. one scissors that big. Isaac, it's art. You're gonna circumcise a giant. Right in the mushroom tip for a mushroom stamp. You gotta mark that baby. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sometime later, Eddie and Bella and various other vampires and wolves are with Bella's dad and his girlfriend at Christmas, blah, blah, blah. They get to a fishing trip that's way out of town, so he won't be here and get murdered by the evil vampires. We literally never see him again. Isaac, you can rest easy. Bella's dad's gonna be okay. Good, so, I was worried about that. So it's the night before the battle or the diplomacy. All the wolves and vamps are sitting around a bonfire and swapping war stories. Sadly, this is probably the most interesting part of the whole movie, because, but it involves a bunch of characters who do not matter. <laughs> and I think Jacob has like a line in there. Because they're, like, they're sitting around and it's like the stuff about vampires I like, where they're like, oh yeah, well I was uh, there when the Ottomans stormed Constantinople. Right, and, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, I almost got Custer off the horse at the Battle of Bull Run. Yeah, like, I saw the Gettysburg Address. Yeah, yeah, yeah like the that kind of shit is like... It's a bunch of fucking old vampires, like, laughing about how absurd their lives are. Like, that's yeah. the one thing I can get to. But it's all these fucking nobodies who don't mm. matter and are going to die tomorrow. <laughs> so, it like, they had a, it was, and it was only, it's like, seriously, 20 seconds. I was just so grasping onto anything I could. So, uh, anyway... Um, Edward and Daddy Cullen have what I assume is a father-son conversation. I don't know if they're blood-related or it's a vampire son. Dad, I did the whole bit already. I think the latter, I don't give a fuck. Uh, Bella has a last moment with her daughter, which is very sappy. She tells Renesmee to stick by Jacob during the negotiations slash battle tomorrow, no matter what, since he'll make sure she's good and fucked when she grows up, or something <laughs> like that. So, uh, what I wondered at this point was, because, like, they're preparing to, like, potentially have Jacob and Renesmee be on the lam forever. At what point does Jacob, like, look at her and be, like, sit her down, like, okay, hey, I've been protecting you for the last however many years you've been growing up, and, like, you're 18 now, so do you want to kiss, or what? (laughs) Like, seriously, it's just, it's just Woody Allen. It's Uh, just Woody Allen. Yeah, no. Uh, it's, it's Woody Allen. That, ah, uh, yeah, that's awkward. And, right. Again, 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 
I will give some bit of credit. I get the idea that they were trying to put forth. Yeah, mushroom stamping the baby. The problem is he is going to mushroom stamp the baby. So it really invalidates all the goodwill that I have to give you, which is already yeah. very minuscule. Like, you you get what they're going. I feel like, like, jokes aside, you get it, though, right? You understand what they're trying to do. Yeah. Because this is the criticism. protecting. This is, exactly. But this just, is the counter argument to they want to fuck the, he wants to fuck the baby. Under under no circumstances, if you as an adult know someone as a baby, should you ever fuck that person, no matter if they're yeah. a baby or not. <laughs> yeah. If you've met someone as a baby, don't fuck it. You just can't fuck it. Unless you're also a baby or like or three, well, yeah. I don't know. If, if, if you're, you're an, an adult appreciable and you age, meet a baby, under yeah. no circumstances can you ever fuck anything that baby turns into. Yep. Sorry. Except a corpse. Just impossible. <laughs> I, I am willing to don't. I'm, I want to start a charity where I donate people's bodies to necrophiles or necrophiliacs. And I'm I mean, willing feel, to do it myself. I'm I with. feel like it should be a checkbox on the, you know, you yeah. can be an organ donor. You, I, 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 no, I, I agree with you there. I mean, if if you're, I don't, you do whatever the fuck you want with my body. Don't use it to hurt anybody I care about. Like, don't throw it at my sister. The the immoral That's... part of <laughs> necrophiliacs is digging up bodies that were, you know, meant to be preserved or whatever. Right. But if yeah, you I, have I'd corpses it where it's like, come at me, bro. I don't give it. There's nothing I'm, wrong with necrophilia. I'm of the Danny DeVito uh, or uh, Frank Reynolds method. Just throw my fucking corpse Char- in the trash. I don't give a shit. Do you want to start a charity with me? I don't know about a charity. I mean, I feel like it's a bad look. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. If we put on tuxedos, we'll get money. Listen, I'll be a silent donor, but I'm not going to put my name on it. Sorry, that's I don't you know not going to go that far. We'll give I don't want we'll to go a different name. <laughs> I feel like in in 400 years, I don't want someone to look at a headstone that says Larry Beard, champion of necrophiles. I don't just think like I don't want no, that to be a not, legacy. You know? You're not going to have a headstone if you're just fucked into oblivion as a corpse. That's an excellent point. Also, you can use a different name. You can be Harry Mustache. That, oh, yeah. Never heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Fucking, I've heard every variation of his name you can possibly put that up. But no, I, I think there should just be a checkbox. Like, yeah, donate my body to fucking. I truly don't care after I'm dead. I'm just going to get a tattoo on my chest. Fuck my corpse. <laughs> anyway, where were we? What, what movie were we doing? <laughs> we're two hours in. <laughs> Jesus Christ, are we really? I, yeah. I, I, yeah. God damn It'll it. be shorter once we edit it, but goddamn. Not much shorter. <laughs> I apologize. I've, I've, I'm not helping. The day of the battle... I am very warm, but my asshole's held up, so we're, doing, we're, doing, we're hanging in. <laughs> the day the battle and or negotiation arrives, our hero vampire and hero wolves all gather in a big, wide-open snow plane. I just remembered something. I have to, real quick, text uh, my friend and tell her I'm going to be a little later to drop off. Because I told her I would do it at 8. <laughs> <laughs> we might have messed up. Okay. All right, so day of the battle and or negotiation, hero vampires, hero wolves all gather in a big wide open snow plain. The Volturi show up in force in a big line, uh, most of them in black robes. The landscape is absolutely gorgeous here, especially if you like snow. But what I find hilarious is that they have a gigantic open field here, and both sides like of the conflict barely take up like a, a quarter of it combined <laughs> you could have like a semi-reasonable lord of the rings battle in this field maybe a bit smaller than what they have in those yeah. but like both sides of this conflict are comically small for the that's, area of land they're in that's not a good look like why would you make like, it like a tight grove or something there's like 25 maybe in team cullen also speaking, and there's... Of, speaking of a tight grove how's that baby doing <laughs> she's six now <laughs> oh, Still... okay i'll wait i'll wait <laughs> Team Jacob. Team Jacob. Um, and the, so, yeah, there's like 25-ish Cullens, maybe, and there's maybe 45, 50 Volturi. So it's not a lot of people. Like, for a, a battle, which is what the, the the vibe they're going for, it seems comically small. Yeah. It's not um, epic. No. So uh, the um, Arrow, Otto, the leader of the Volturi, oh. is apparently on the lookout for Psychic Cullen, since he wants her in his vamp crew or to fuck her or whatever, I don't know. But she's still not back. Otero and Daddy Cullen try to negotiate what's going on. Daddy explains that Renesme is a halfy. Otero reads Edward's mind using his weird hand touch powers and realizes that it's the truth, asking to meet Renesme. Now, Isaac, I had asked you to pull up and listen to a clip that I sent you before we started recording, and I'd like you to please insert that laugh here. 
This it's, is the main villain of this franchise. It's the most ridiculous sound of a villain ever. I, when I had Isaac listen to it, he was like, oh, so well, that's pretty funny. And I'm like, no, 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 that's in the movie. He's like, wait, that's in the movie? I thought this was like a smosh parody of the movie. <laughs> that <laughs> fucking, this is the main villain of this franchise, and that's how he laughs. It, it would be like if Darth Vader was voiced by Pee Wee fucking Herman. Yeah, pretty much. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's I don't mind making ridiculous. a villain, like, you know, not traditionally dark and brooding. Especially vampires are already fucking dark and brooding enough, for Christ's yeah, sake. Yeah, but you I don't need mind some, them throwing... some factor of intimidation. He's, like, not scary, but also it's just, like, that laugh is so weird. What is that? I don't... If I was one of the Cullens, I'd start cracking up and probably die. But, you know, I'd start cracking up at it, that. It's Who what? laughs like that? An asshole. Yeah. Um, Renezme does her weird vampire power to Adro, the one where she can like share memories with people that isn't well explained. We don't see what he shares with her, so I, I don't fucking know. Mm. Um, the Volturi kind of argue that it can't be true, and they bring forward blonde lady spy. Like I said, she has two sisters on the Cullen side. One of them has electric powers. Um, so she has a change of heart about being a villain and tries to back out of it. So the Volturi cut off her head and burn her body. Jesus. Um, yeah, well, they're villains, whatever. Okay. The good guy blonde vampires try to attack the Volturi, but the other good guy vampires hold them back, and a fight doesn't break out. <sighs> the standoff continues until the evil Volturi sister girl, that is maybe a wife, maybe a sister, maybe incestuous, I don't know, causes Edward pain with her power. She does the Harry Potter thing that you said earlier. The Cruciatus um, curse. That's the one. Bella uses her shield power to protect all the good guys, because Bella's the best. Um... The Volturi realize that Bella, or the fruit of her womb, is way too special for them not to have in their crew, and or dead. Um, <clears throat> Adoro gives a speech that the unknown is too spooky for vampires right now, because humans are actually strong enough to kill vampires. Because, if you think about it, vampires are kind of weak to the sun, running water, holy water, garlic, wood. Just kind of not drinking blood for a couple of days, which isn't always a guarantee. They're kind of weaker than humans if you really think about it you're just not in this franchise it's very easy to kill a vampire if you know one exists it's really you wear a crucifix wait and watch where he goes when he fucking goes to sleep and then just knock a hole in his fucking coffin and he's dead it's a good point vampires suck and you're wrong for liking them yeah they're pretty bad um I guess these vampires can be in the sun, since all I do is fucking sparkle. Yeah, yeah sparkle, sparkle. Um, Mr. Clean style. So, yeah. Uh, what was I at here? So, yeah. Th apparently, humans are actually a threat now, so they can't risk Renesme being allowed to live free, when suddenly, Psychic Cullen and her husband arrive. Uh, suddenly. And Psychic Cullen tells Adoro to you that she has evidence that Renesme isn't a risk to their kind. So, he goes to her and does his weird hand-touch mind-read thing. So, he's reading her mind. Um, but she like pulls back and is like, nothing's ever going to make you change your mind. And then the fight kind of just starts. Um, Jacob takes Renesme and he's a, he's a wolf in this whole scene and he runs off into the woods and a uh, nonsense vampire fight starts. Um, uh, of course. So both sides start fighting. So, uh, the first thing that happens is daddy Cullen, who's kind of like the thing that holds all the Cullens together. Um, he dies instantly. Jesus. He flies at Adaro. Adaro rips off his head, and he's immediately dead. Jesus and this Christ. And is, this is what springs everybody else into action. All of the flying looks absurd. Mm. They cannot make it look good. Is it better and, or as, worse than the fast running? Better. Nothing looks worse than the fast okay, running. Okay, fair enough. The fast running is it is it's an effect worst. that yeah. should not be attempted. Not even just Twilight. A anytime you do vampire fast running, it, it looks stupid. It's just not a thing to do. Um, most of the vampires, if not all the vampires, can fly. To note. Um, to recap, a bunch of good guys and bad guys die. The CGI fighting looks pretty stupid. Uh, I don't like watching the wolves die because they have very dog sounds, and we all know how I feel about dog death. Uh, most of the wolves do die, and it's very sad. Um, we see a bunch of showdowns uh, between characters that I'm guessing were rivals in the rest of the series, but mean nothing to me here because that's not my job today, so fuck it. Uh, we get, it's like a lot of one-on-one -on -one fights between characters who are kind of not calling each other out by name, but it's like we can tell by the way it's being shot that, right. like, oh, these guys are rivals of some sort, and then, oh, one gets a head ripped off. Okay. So, um, Psychic Cullen's husband is dramatically killed to the dismay of Psychic Cullen. Jacob and Renesmee get chased through the forest by two vampire flunkies that Jake relatively easily defeats with no challenge. Evil sister Volturi girl, like, has brain power. I already mentioned she has pain powers. Um, I don't like the sad wolf faces when they see that they're wolf mates die uh 
the dumbest part of the entire movie. I know what I said. <laughs> You're saying a lot. Randy Malik sees the fight isn't going so hot for them because they're fucking hopelessly outnumbered. He has he has like bender powers. Like he's basically Ang from last Ang from last time. Give screw you. I almost called him Sebastian. What's his name? Shyamalan Ding Dong, <laughs> aka Sebastian. Oh, it's, fuck uh, yeah. you, guy. <laughs> um. So yeah, the fucking Randy Malik's basically a bender. He opens up a big chasm in the ground. What? Which a bunch of vampires fall into. Right, you told me about this. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, vampires can, can fly. Can fly. Yeah. You mentioned that. Oh, no. These guys seem to forget. Maybe they were just startled. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. Um, Edward falls into the hole. And oh. then he remembers that he can fly. Oh, And okay. flies out of the hole. Well, thank God. He's got the other vampires fucking do not fly at all. Wait, what? The other vampires. Oh, no. They just fall to their death. Okay. So only Edward. Let's see one of the wolves fall to their death, which that was sad. Um, Did you, do you see the moment of realization on Edward's face where he's like, oh, no. Oh, right, I can fly. No, because it's a dramatic scene where, like, his rival, whoever the fuck, just some villain dude with dark hair, who, they, they, he gets enough screen time, even though he doesn't say anything, that I can tell he's a villain I'm supposed to know. And, so, like, he's guy who's probably tangled with them before. And we, like, he, they do the thing where he, Edward goes down the cliff, and then they, that guy, he's, like, confidently walking away, and then all of a sudden, boom, Edward out of a snowdrift. Oh, I can fly, duh, fucking duh. And also, Freddie Mercury opens up the fucking chasm knowing that's going to kill a bunch of the people on his side, too. Um, I I think, like, Bella is, like, uh, getting tackled by, like, four vampires, and she's uh. about to get fucking et. And I think he opens it. It might not be Bella. He opens it up to, like, give their side an et. Like, I don't think any of the good guys fall down the hole. Is it the one wolf? Uh, I think it's all bad vampires that fall down the oh, hole. okay, okay. There's a lot more bad vampires than good vampires. Freddy's not as dumb as I thought. Okay. Oh, he's still an idiot. Oh, oh, by the way, I'm pretty sure we never see him on screen again after that. <laughs> Maybe, I think you see him in, like, group shots. He's got to go um, cut another record. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, Freddie Mercury, I wish I alive. Um, Evil Volturi's sister gets killed, which I guess is a big deal since everybody seems pretty happy to see her die. Uh, one right. of the wolves bites off her face. <laughs> so Okay. That happens. Uh, since Bella's power makes that girl entirely useless. And uh, she just, like, nullifies that chick's power, and then a wolf bites off her face. Like, psychic Cullen vampire drags her to a wolf, and the wolf bites off her face. Fair enough. Um, so Adoro is watching this whole fight, and then finally, like, after the twin girl, incestuous wife, I don't know, vampire dies, he, like, finally springs into the fight, and he's a big bad vamp, and he's gonna come in and wreck shop, and Bella and Edward kill him in 30 seconds. Jesus. That reminds me of... What? They fight him for 30 seconds and fucking rip his head off. That What's the, the fucking Jeff Bridges movie we did? Seventh uh, Son. That reminds me of the end of that. Son. Where just like... Oh, yeah, yeah. All these Wait. villains just get built up and then all Seventh of a sudden Son? these people just that? like get rid of them. I don't remember that. Which one was that? The, the one the, of yours? Yeah, the one of the act that. Oh fucking... yeah, with uh, fucking yeah, John Snow was in it for five minutes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That's but right. But yeah, just the climax, like just they defeat all these people so quickly, and it's like mm -hmm. there's no payoff. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, here's the thing, Isaac. Uh, you know how you said there's no payoff? Do we get a payoff? Well, so so uh, Bella and Edward kick Otto's ass. They okay. rip off his head, and then like we see Bella gets the only way to I guess I don't know fucking permadeath in vampire worlds. You burn him with a torch. We see a uh, decapitated head vision from Otto's head, and we see Bella moving the torch towards it. What? And the camera pulls back. What? And we see that this has all been a vision what? that Otto has seen by holding Psychic Con's hand. What are Isaac, you talking about? Isaac, that fight was a dream sequence. <laughs> what are you talking about? Isaac, that fight was a dream sequence. What are you talking about? This, this is the part I had seen. I, I think I told the story. I had like come into my ex-girlfriend's house at one point, and she was watching this, and it was like right at this part. And I remember seeing that and then finding out it was a fuck. So I knew this was going to happen going into it. And then fucking seeing the fight was a dream sequence and just saying, like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and she was so mad. The climax of the movie didn't happen. Yeah. What? Yeah. Larry. <laughs> so yeah, Otto knows that with via psychic powers, he knows that if he goes to fight, he's going to die. So he calls it off. That's that's literally the worst. Oh, I'm sorry. Isaac gets worse no because no larry um, stop now isaac i want to ask you there's five words that makes the only thing that could make this more ridiculous what shows up to this fight no, well not a fight anymore this fucking diplomacy 
to make this more ridiculous. The fucking baby? She's already there. Uh, the dad. Deus Ex Machina Native Americans. Oh, werewolves? No. Wait, what? The fucking Psychic Cullen says, I have proof that Renesmee is not going to fuck up the vampire war. And out of literally nowhere comes a Native American man, a Native American woman. The man says, I am a half and half. I was my mother. My, my dad bit my mom. She died in childbirth. Uh, my aunt took care of me and I made her a vampress. <laughs> so yeah, they just have proof. He's 107 years old. So Bella like immediately knows he's going to live that Renesme because they are afraid Renesme is going to die in like a year because she's growing so fast. She's going to age and die. Right. She's half. So, and even better, it only took him seven years to become fully grown into what he is now. And then he stopped and then he spent the other hundred years as a fully formed adult. So guess what? Jacob's going to get to dip his dick sooner than he thinks. Mm. Thank God. I was worried about it. So yeah, I'm not finishing the review. That's it. As far as I'm concerned, that's the end of the fucking movie. I'm done with it. Fuck it. I, I'm seriously. There's at that point when after they were like, I am 107 years old. I have been a vampire for all that time. I stopped the review. I fucking hover. I stopped. I paused. I hovered over the keyboard and I just wrote the words "fuck it" because <laughs> fuck it. I, no. I just what what else is there to say? That's it. Yeah, everybody goes their separate ways. Everybody's happy. Everything's fine. The last shot we see is um, fucking Bella and Jacob and Edward and Renezme, who's now a blonde teenager. It was like, kind of looks like she's their age. And that's it. Let me go to credits. Fuck, I don't, you want to see everybody's, where are they now? They don't get that exactly. You watch it your goddamn self. I want to see Taylor Lautner just balls deep in Roseanne Barr. This, fuck this, fuck you, <laughs> zero out of ten, review over. <laughs> really, zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. Really? I was furious. <laughs> this, I, I, this, I would say that my least favorite movie up till now was probably uh, House Guest, I think it's called. The Not Polly Love, Shore Wedding movie. Marriage? No, House Guest bumped it. Really? Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is the worst? This, I, it's, I don't know. It's in the top three. It's wow. those three are the top three now. Wow. This, Twilight 2, Twilight 4, 5, I don't fucking care. Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2. Twilight Booger uh, 5. Uh, uh, then House Guest, then Love Wedding Marriage. They're the top three. Jesus. This, if you need to know why this sucked, you haven't been paying attention. The acting was bad. The vampire running was bad. The fighting looked stupid. The, the plot is nonsensical. There's a billion characters that don't matter. Like, the Cullens get, like, these two Amazon vampires that don't speak. They get, like, this old Civil War vampire who's, like, still reliving the glory of the fucking American Revolution. They get, like, some moody English punk vampire. There's, like, fucking a bunch of guys from Ireland who don't know where they came from, but they're just there. And there's one scene where it's like, hey, those Irish guys might fuck us. They never do. They, I just don't know where they're coming from. The villain motivation is shaky at best. The CGI baby is a fucking nightmare. Bella... It's just the most amazing thing to ever exist, ever, anywhere on planet Earth. So you're wrong if you think anything otherwise. <laughs> and she's beloved by everyone and constantly reminded how amazing she is. The rules for vampire thirst are just all over the goddamn place. The final plot point is garbage and out of nowhere. And the best part is the filmmakers were like, Hey, you want this this fight scene? Let's make it real. It's bad, but let's let's do it. Stephanie Meyer refused to sign off on it because her vision <laughs> in the books was the exact way of how it ended in the movies, and she said it has to be the same. Jesus. And then the whole baby fucking thing. Which do I need to say? Need I say more about that? Yeah, you can say baby fucking thing, and people know where we stand. Every aspect of this was bad. When my the only praise I have to give this is this wolf CGI looked good. <laughs> You have fucking failed utterly. Yeah. Like, this fails not as only as the ending of a... Like, how anticlimactic and shitty is that ending to a series? And this Seriously. Is the, books, the books end the same way. The exact same way. Because I, I, when I heard that she insisted on this, I looked up the ending to see if they were different. They end the exact same way. What a fucking wet fart. See, like, imagine the imagine heart... at the end of Star Wars A New Hope. Episode four, when they all fucking blow up the Death Star, and then when the Death Star's exploding, we cut back, and it's like Luke having a fucking vision in the pub on Tatooine, and it's like, <laughs> well, shit, guess I better stay home today. Yeah. Or just, like, the end of Harry Potter. Like, yeah, Voldemort the Big Bad dies. 
Like, how right. could that not be the ending? How in and any way wanted, could that not be the ending? Even if you wanted diplomacy, I'm fine with you ending it not with a big fight. Don't cock tease me. <laughs> <laughs> you just did all the Harry Potter stuff that everybody's mad about J.K. Rowling about of like, oh, they killed Do- of Spoilers for Harry Potter if you care about it. Fucking jump ahead a minute, but I encourage you to just listen yeah, to it. Yeah, Taylor Taylor's Lautner right. fucked Dobby to death. Taylor Lautner kills Hedwig with his cock. No, <laughs> N- Jacob did. Not Taylor Lautner. Taylor Lautner's a fine man. There's done nothing wrong. Yeah, um, well, I don't know about that. I can't prove it, but I mean, he hasn't. I haven't seen any evidence. I haven't seen the documents. Thank you, Alex. Um, but like, it's it, Harry Potter did all that shit and fucking at least had the balls to stick with it. Right. This was just like, wouldn't it be sad? Wouldn't it be sad if Psychic Cullen's husband dies? <laughs> right, yeah. I don't even remember. Because none of the main well, characters... Daddy Cullen dies, or... Okay. None of the main characters even die in the fantasy, right? Uh, Daddy Cullen is kind of a main... Eh, kind fuck of. Daddy Cullen. He's, like, the most important of the non-main plot. Yeah. Because he's, like, the one... He's, like, the patriarch. Okay, okay. But it, nobody... I mean, I don't know if the wolves are important. A lot of them die, but... Eh. I don't know who they are. One of the fucking Weasley twins. That's a pretty important side character. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, it's such a cock tease of like, look what I could. Wouldn't that have been awful? But no, everybody, everything's fine. Everybody's great. And like the 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 two ridiculous Bavarian vampires are like, ah, you are fools. They will come back and grant the numbers <laughs> and shit like that. And but it's so it's like, was she setting herself up for a back door to write fucking Twilight two vampire boogaloo? Oh, I don't know. But like, it, it's such a wet fart of an ending. What is what has Stephanie Myers done with the last twelve years? Uh, I have a Wikipedia pulled up. Oh, Jesus. I, don't, I didn't really want to know. Uh, I, I don't think... I think she wrote, like, other books that just yeah, weren't... They're, just like... I think she wrote... They they don't have the same... Why is William Shakespeare's picture on this fucking page? Who Delete dares? Delete it. Delete it. Oh, Throw your William computer... William Shakespeare's plays influenced two of the Twilight novels. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Merchant of fucking uh, oh, Venice. Oh, the Merchant... Yeah, Merchant fucking, of Venice. What yeah. a shock. Yeah, it counts as influencing <laughs> it. You know the title of a play, you dumb fucking... God! Ugh. Yeah. Um, Jesus. She, Anything yeah, else, she's, Larry? She wrote more. She's working on a TV series, or it already exists. I, I, I think the stuff she's done has just been like, no one's cared. Right, yeah. Because she's not a good writer. Oh, no. She's terrible. She just got very lucky on the heels of Harry Potter and vampires. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Well, this was rough. This was rough. That was this. This one. This one hurt. Yeah, man. you you were hot, and we did run long. Part of that was me talking about sucking chocolate milk out of boobies and baby fucking. <laughs> but well, I yeah. So this yeah. Sorry for the length on this one, but hey, man. I oh, if I had a nickel for every time I've had to say that, you've never said it. You broke <laughs> nope. as a skunk. Nope. Yeah, it's pretty small. Um, uh, <laughs> God. Jesus. Well, okay. So we did Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2 this week. And next week, uh, I believe I'm covering... Oh, hold on there, Isaac. How familiar are you with the wrestling concept known as the Money in the Bank briefcase? Uh, I'm fairly familiar. I, I got to yeah, watch I'm CM giving... Punk bleed. I'm giving myself one. So for those of you who are not wrestling fans, that's the thing you can do. You just cash it in at any given point and win, uh, get an immediate uh, championship title match. Yeah, I'm doing that right now. I'm cashing in. So I'm not so... watching Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1? No. What? No, yeah, and I'm sorry you already watched half of it. I was looking forward to it. (laughs) I don't remember what the movie is, but I know at one point you made me go off script and watch an HBO movie. Yeah, it was was something. uh, I had no idea what it was. It was on Amazon Prime. It was director's cut by Penn Jillette. That doesn't sound familiar. It wasn't on Amazon Prime? Well, uh, anyway, off book is the part that matters. I thought it was HBO. (laughs) But I don't don't remember that movie. It sounds weird. I don't know what you're talking about. It sounds stupid and terrible. Um, But, uh, yeah, I thought it was my turn. I tried to watch a movie. I did watch a whole movie. And uh, I was in utter shock at how terrible it was. And I said to myself, you know, and this is before. (laughs) This is before I did my review. So... I wish I had known just how much I was going to hate Twilight. But uh, yeah, instead of that, Isaac, uh, next week, you're going to be watching Space Jam, A New Legacy. Oh, oh Isaac, no. it is maybe the worst thing I've seen this year until Twilight. I like the first Space Jam, although to so be fair, I. I watched it when I, I was it 10. Same story. That's why I turned it on. Oh, no. LeBron. LeBron, did you fuck it up? Oh, no. LeBron fucked it up. Oh, no. Oh, my God. So, yeah, because this is on HBO Max, right? Which I don't I don't currently have access to. We're going to work out you those can, kinks. You can use mine, yep. But, uh, so I can't, I can't describe it, or I can't read the description, like, on Netflix, like, normal. But I, I think I can do my oh, best let me, anyway. Let, let me read it for you, then, oh, by okay. all means. 
Well, can can I take a stab at it first? You, you can take a stab at it. Okay. Uh, LeBron James uh, wakes up from a night of cocaine and hookers and finds that he's in Bugs Bunny land and has to play basketball with the Looney Tunes against a bunch of aliens, and he has to go far too long before getting his dick sucked by groupies. Um, Isaac, that is almost 100% wrong. Oh, too bad. I, I mean, think he's actually. I think he, LeBron's actually like a really good family man. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 it, the movie is about his family. Um, Space Jam: A New Legacy, twenty twenty one. Uh, it's available. It, and the reason why I, I the reason I'm bumping Twilight for it, uh, for real, is because this has a limited window. Um, it's free on HBO Max for until I think the first week of September. So I, I wanted to make sure we got it in. in time. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's, it's, I don't want. I know you did. I do feel bad because you did watch part of Twilight. Part breaking down part one, but yeah, I didn't want to right. throw it. Th- th- this is important because holy shit. I, I understand why you're doing this now. In Space Jam, A New Legacy, the ready for action Looney Tunes destroy convention, supercharge their unique talents, and surprise even King James by playing their own way. Ew, King oh, James. Oh, no. Oh, this is streaming through August 15th. I was wrong. Fuck, never mind. <laughs> no, we'll make it work. Are you sure? That's two days from now. I can do it on Sunday. Are you. As long as you're positive, I I, yeah, it, I thought it was... We might have to bump our meeting. Okay, I <laughs> we swear We were going to meet together to discuss the length of our penises uh, and how to make very, them longer. Very short meeting. <laughs> Get what I did there? I, I genuinely thought it was through September. I'm so sorry. Yeah, if, if it doesn't work out, then it's Twilight. If it does work out, then it's Space Jam. Well, it's going to it's gonna have to be Space Jam because, Larry, your next movie, there's four oh Twilight movies left. Yeah, you know, I knew this was coming regardless, but... Oh, man. No, it hurts. I would like you to Google roll a D4. I think my D&D dice are right here. Or you could roll a real die. I I trust we're on the honor system. They're in the kitchen. Uh, They're in the kitchen? Why are they in the kitchen? I have a small apartment. My table I used to play D&D on was in the dining room. Okay, okay. But yeah, we're going to randomly decide which Twilight movie you're watching and just go completely out of order, probably. Unless you get a four. I had to roll two. Okay, well, I'm going to... I I did a test roll on the letter day, because I'm going to just take the first one of these that are one. So Larry's doing just straight up Twilight, right? Uh, for fuck's <laughs> sake! So we're going from the end of the story to the beginning of the story, with a you're, little bit of you're, space jam in between. <laughs> you're killing our <laughs> listeners! No, 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 this is going to be delightful. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, by the way... You are getting Twilight after Space Jam. No fucking oh, yeah, ifs, ands, or buts about it. I know, I know. I'm getting Twilight. I'm aware. I'm just, uh, I'm glad we're going really out of order. I want it to be total oh, chaos. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, right. Well, let's let's end the show on a happy note, because... No, I refuse! <laughs> we had someone right in. One of oh, the very yeah, few exactly. times, and he's he's actually written it again after we like ghosted him for a long time. We should actually reply <laughs> to him instead of yeah. just read it on air and tell him how much we love him. But our dear friend Mr. Michael emailed in, "Hey guys, I'm loving all of the consistency you've had as of late, <laughs> and we are too. We've we've been much better." <laughs> I like that. That is the bare minimum you can hope for us. Is, oh, good, they fucking did the job. That's very not that hard. It just takes time. To be fair, we don't get for... paid yet, so no, I'll give us some yeah. credit. Good on them for doing basic confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way. He goes on to say, I've been catching up on your backlog and I'm loving it. Exclamation mark. We got an exclamation mark. Aw. Gotta say, I need more of Larry angrily explaining Bible stories, which I concur with. <laughs> what the fuck? I was trying to think of what that what, what year the one, hell was. Year one. Or year zero or whatever. Oh, year one. Was I angrily? I gotta listen to that again. Yeah, no, no. Because so much of it was Bible? like trying to be clever like allegorical bible shit and it was just stupid <laughs> so i can't you just... remember me talking about isaac and his son yeah yeah and <laughs> sodom and gomorrah and the old. angels and all that <laughs> uh yeah it was phenomenal he says keep up the great work a terrible movie i saw recently that mayhaps one of you fellas can watch is hubby halloween or little nicky i don't know how people like them keep it up fellas michael that was a very nice email thank you so much thank thank you so much it's it's really nice to hear from people i'm I'm glad you're enjoying this yeah and we we appreciate getting feedback because we have zero self-esteem at all oh none i hate myself we're monsters and i think hubby halloween is because well okay little nicky i I think it's i kind of i kind of like little nicky 
I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, everybody. But I'm pretty sure Hubby Halloween is trash. And it's fucking Hubie. Really? It's saying Hubby. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Hubie Halloween. I think it's his name. Hubby is with two Bs, man. Oh, shit, man. I just can't pronounce anything. <laughs> Apparently not. I mean, I, I have only heard. I've not looked. Other people, I've heard other people talk about it. Yeah, no, it's that's it, what looking at it now, it's Hubie. I just assumed Hubby because I'm an idiot. So <laughs> never mind. Anyway, shut up, you. I can't pronounce stuff. Um, But yeah, I'm sure that's not very good, and we're only a couple months out from Halloween. So I think once we're done with Twilight, Hubie Halloween, that's so so much worse. I agree. It's not good. Why? It's It's an Adam Sandler movie. Most of them are bad. I, 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 uh, my very first girlfriend, um, Little Nicky was her favorite movie, so I think I've convinced myself that I like it because I had to, but I don't remember if I actually like it. (laughs) Adam Sandler was great in the 90s and then slowly trailed off and i'm not quite sure where it stopped I have, early 2000s ish yeah i have some nostalgia for some of his stuff but like i'm under no any sort of mystification that he is anything but the worst he's no he's not the worst isaac i don't think those movies are actually good I Billy think Madison and Happy Gilmore. He beats up Bob Barker. These might be our um, Twilight <laughs> that we are like for no reason. I-, I like Big Daddy, even though I know that movie is bad. It's I'm fun. I'm positive that movie is bad. I- I- the I- other ones, I don't know. I, I-, I don't know, man. Hubie Halloween looked terrible from what I saw. Hubby, Hubby, thank you. No, it's Hubie. Because I, I thought about pulling the trigger on that. I believe it came out last Halloween. And I thought about pulling the trigger on that, but then I remembered, like, you like Adam Sandler and might be willing to overlook his flaws. Like, not yeah, even on purpose. Just I, on the, I, you know. I bet I would rate this higher than you would rate it, right. but I don't think it's going to be more than a three. I think that is uh, entirely accurate. Well, thank you so much for the suggestion. I'm pretty sure good old hubby Halloween is going to be coming down the pipe. You're an idiot. I know. <laughs> I have I have no delusions otherwise. Uh, uh, and thank you so much, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate it. And please, write in more. We would love to hear from you. We might read your email on air. And once we become huge, famous podcast stars, yeah, sure. we'll let you suck us off. Suck milk right out of our nipple. Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk, thank you. Oh, man. This has been a long episode. <laughs> Okay, so you got the lefty chocolate, you got the right strawberry. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Find us on Twitter. Find us on Facebook. Email us, pals at Netflix at gmail.com. Ooh. Rate, subscribe. Kick your grandmother in the teeth if she still has them. <laughs> Tell her to listen to this fucking podcast because she's wasting her fucking retirement. <laughs> Jesus. Anything else, Larry? No, man. That's it. I, I have got to stop <laughs> When are you going to smell them? Uh, Later. We love you. (laughs) 